Damn, Q. Maybe you did that. What up, what up, what up, man? It's your boy, Shy. Shy vs. Everybody Podcast. Voice of Detroit. Motherfucking podcast MVP in this motherfucker, man. The champ is here! Everybody podcast episode 127. We got a special guest in the building. I say that a lot, but this one is really special. <laughs> we got uh Detroit First Lady of Comedy, an actress, radio personality, speaker, and an HP legend. Ooh, ooh. Got Coco in the building. What's How you up? doing? Good afternoon. Good, good afternoon. afternoon. How y'all doing? Good morning. Good afternoon. Depending on where you at yeah, for sure. when you listening to this. How y'all doing, gentlemen? Okay, I'm good. I'm good. I'm, I'm great. I'm excited to be Me, here. I'm excited that you're here. I, I actually didn't think you would even respond to me. Really? Yeah, because I want to have Mike Larry on on and stuff like that. And I know he worked with you a lot. I made sure I tagged you. I'm like, let me see if I tag her. You did. And then once I asked, and she's like, yeah. I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm still. And I still thought you probably was like, you know, what I'm saying, pulling my leg a little bit. No, I, you know what? You know, it's funny. <laughs> it, I I hear that a lot. Mm -hmm. Like people ask me, they'll invite me to whatever may be going on. Coco, I'm doing this. Can you come? Whatever. And if I can't come. Mm -hmm. I'll be like, I can't make it. Can't come, it. yeah, for sure. But if I'm coming and going or whatever, I'll be like, yeah, I'll be there, whatever, what time going on. Mm -hmm. And people be like, I didn't think he was going to come. Well, you you asked me to come. Yeah. And I know in this industry, there are people that have um, muddied other people's reputation. For sure. And people be like, she ain't going to come because you know how she be acting. Yeah. No, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> listen, listen, li listen. I have showed up in some places. I'm like, <laughs> I, I got to go back to the car because I need another pistol. Uh, no. <laughs> Fast, yeah. I need a bow and arrow yeah. and, and some blow darts because no. they didn't tell me this was where I was going. Yeah. That's why when I sent you an address because me and him was talking, I'm like, yeah, she might say no once I sent an address. I knew exactly where I was yeah. going. Yeah. That's why I asked you what street you was between. Yep, 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 so yep. I got people on uh, Kennebec. Okay, yeah. yeah I got people right all in the area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, sit, that city airport right there? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Baby. <laughs> got some stories about her. Hell. <laughs> Hell. Yeah, that's, that's some throwbacks. We've been over here forever. My grandma, is, this is her house. Okay. And she's been over here since 1979. Yes. So, yeah, it's the only house I know as far as, like, this neighborhood. I stayed on college. Well, I stayed in about 50 different addresses. So. It's, it's, it's okay. <laughs> Listen, this used to be the drag race area, too. Yep, yep. Right on the other side. Yep. On the other side, yeah. Yeah, for so sure. So, I knew exactly where I was going. I said, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, you know, usually when you got like a smaller name and stuff and you reach out to people, they be like, oh, I'm good. But everybody, so for me, everybody's somebody. Mm -hmm. So I don't treat people like, oh, I really don't know you. Who are you? What have you done? Uh, I, mm -hmm. I, I'm not that person. Sure, yeah. So everybody is somebody to me, especially the way the world is revolving and moving oh, yeah. now. So the world moves kind of fast mm -hmm. now. And I don't take anybody for granted. I don't take any situation for granted. Dang. Um, because it's not it's not just you never know. Mm. Is life is constantly changing, mm. and I always want to be the kind person, the person that says something encouraging, or the person that does something encouraging. I don't want to be the person that has left a bad taste in your mouth. Yeah, I, sure, I don't yeah. want to be that person. I yeah. want to be like, yeah, I met her. I'm fat, <laughs> fat ass. <laughs> fat bitch. I don't want to. Because, <laughs> you know, that, even if you ain't fat, they call you fat. Yeah, but why they do fat. that, though? Like, with, with white people, with black people, first thing they'll say, damn nigger. And yeah. then with fat people, fat ass. Like, it's always like. <laughs> but see, with fat people, you ain't got to be fat. And they'll call you fat because they know that'll hurt. Yeah. It's like, you, like you, we was cool all these years. And as soon as I made you mad, I'm a fat ass. Oh, ug no. Ugly ass. Oh, fat, fake black, ass. bald headed. <laughs> Hell yeah. You that's like you've been in a relationship with a woman all these years and all of a sudden you got a small dick like but, but, but okay let me tell like, you why damn we've been Be together for a long time because you we love when we love you when we love you we don't say hurtful things to you mm -hmm. but when you're in a relationship and you like somebody <laughs> we we say stuff like that yeah. like if i'm dating a guy and I'm, I'm telling my girls about him I'm like girl he is so this and he that and, and he this he a little shorter than me yeah. and he got a finger missing <laughs> and all of that it's so cute the way his little finger be missing and all that soon as i get mad with you girl let me tell you what this short finger <laughs> missing no finger. ass yes exactly yes yeah. but why is it like that like and can love make you even look over their, their um, you know, mishaps. Like, you know what I'm saying? If a dude ain't working with what you want him to work with, but he love you. 
Well, <laughs> listen, you supposed to. Can you to, forget about that? Like, you know, you know. You supposed to look over it. Yeah. So, so the Bible says love covers a multitude of sins. Mm -hmm. Okay. Flaws, imperfections or whatever. Mm -hmm. But most people that was raised in certain households, mm -hmm. when your family got mad with you, what did they do? Mm -hmm. what, what, what did your family say? Bring your big ass on over here. <laughs> Sit on that iron chair. That other chair ain't gonna hold Sit you. Sit your stupid ass down. Sit your dumb ass down. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I said, self-rising meal. <laughs> These is grits that you bought. <laughs> no, for real. For Brandon, real. would you go back up there with Donald dumbass and get me some self-rising cornmeal? <laughs> And, hey. and, and they thought it was from a place of love. Yeah. And you traumatized. Yeah, for real. You never eat cornbread or grits to 40 years later. It hurt you all the time. <laughs> Your feelings is hurt. No, it is. It is. It is. Yeah, because that's, that happened a lot in relationships. You would go on Facebook, for example, and they in love and love. And as soon as the relationship is over with, man, he ain't shit. He ain't make no money. Yeah. He ain't eat two minute brother. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. but during that, that, that relationship, when you loving each other, he can't do no wrong. That McDonald's job is the best job in the world. But you don't, but see, <laughs> you don't, we don't, do we really get to know people nowadays? I mean, for real, for real, like in, 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 in grown people world, mm -hmm. do we really get to know people nowadays? Not really. Everything's we, so fast. We get, I just said yeah. that. We get to know how, okay, okay, so listen, men and women love different. Mm -hmm. A man falls in love with a woman for the way that woman makes him feel. Mm -hmm. A man, a woman falls in love with a man for the way that man treats her. Mm. Test this. Ask a woman, say, hey, you, you're in a relationship? Yeah. He treat me so good. He's so thoughtful. Mm. He be bringing me wings. And he treat me so <laughs> nice. For real. Yeah, for because sure. women want to be treated mm. a certain way. Very yeah, fast. Men, if you ask a man, hey, you in love, you in a relationship? Oh, dog, she make me feel like I'm a king, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. She make me feel so good. Yeah. And when that feeling starts to change, we don't know how to process that feeling. Mm -hmm. Or when he starts treating us differently, we don't have anything else because we don't know why he's treating us differently. Maybe the circumstances has changed and he don't know how to say, hey, baby, look, some things have changed in my life, mm -hmm. and I'm not going to be able to go to so-and-so and so-and-so and get you them wings yeah. or get you them lamb yeah. chops or For whatever sure. the case may be. Yeah. You know, pay your phone bill. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, so you telling me you finna start treating me different? Yeah. Because it's 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 stuff attached to that. Yeah, yeah, me yeah. in the same way. Oh, you! I remember you used to make me feel so good. <laughs> but, but why is that, though? Like, is, it, is, it, is it just because, like, you know, when you first get with somebody, you just, it's like a job interview. You gonna go in there on your best behavior. You gonna talk all white. You know what I'm saying? Wait, stop, <laughs> pause. Wait, uh, uh, hold on. Flag on the play. Flag on the play. You said talk all white. Yeah, for sure. You gonna go in there with your best imp white impersonation. You know what I'm saying? You gonna do, go do the voice. Do the voice. Uh, yeah. I don't <laughs> <laughs> he got the best voice, but you, know, you come here. Hello, how, how are you? I'm great, delightful. You know, you just in there just. You said delightful. Like delightful. You start using the three words syllables. <laughs> delightful. We use it three syllable words. Yeah, you just say stuff that you never even say at home. You know what I'm saying? So that's how a relationship is. You go in there, you you opening doors, you pulling out chairs and stuff, and once you get used to somebody you get lazy and then i know that's why a lot of women you know when they cheat it's because they they really is done with this dude we can cheat and still love you we could cheat and still love you too baby i don't know uh, Wait, tr tr trust me look at me okay look at Are you? Yeah, yeah for sure go ahead talk to me listen <laughs> <laughs> i can look up longer than you can look down mm -hmm. you ever tried to walk looking down mm -hmm. you tripping far right mm -hmm. you gotta look up to walk so women could treat, cheat, and still love you. Mm. L listen, ladies, I'm I'm older now. Hey, yeah. I, I I still could share the woman code. Yeah, yeah, a woman yeah. could cheat mm. and and still love you. Mm. We could cheat with another man in the bed that you bought mm. in the yeah, negligence. That's, that's hard. It hurt. I know. I'm th this facts. <laughs> we could cheat in the bed that you bought with the linen that you ordered from Amazon. Mm. With the negligee that you got, Damn. and <laughs> and give him some of your best. Cognac. Yeah. <laughs> you feel we me? We got a lot of drinks back there. And, 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 and we'll make the call like, 
I'm just calling to see if you got to work. You okay? Yeah, I'm here. You know, I'm working third shift. Mm-hmm. I ain't gonna get I work off. Third shift. I ain't gonna get off to. <laughs> I ain't gonna get off to twelve noon. Oh, okay. I was just thinking about you. Know, I want to do something special for you in the morning. Call me on the way home. The man gonna say no, nah, cause when I come home, I want to get in the bed. She ain't. She ain't doing a climate check. Yeah. She ain't checking. She just checking to see if what you time? at work. Yeah. And even if you get sick. Mm-hmm. At work, she still got thirty minutes to do what she gonna do. Yeah, if she bold enough to do it in y'all bed, mm-hmm. because you'll never know. Yeah, for sure. Okay, I'm Damn. just saying that. That hurt right there. I I ain't trying to hurt you. You been in those situations? I'm trying to help you. Oh, huh? You been in those situations? The views and opinions expressed. <laughs> <laughs> well, you was the hurt, the hurt person, or the, or the person hurt. I've been on both sides. Okay. I've been on. I have been. I have. Yeah, I didn't been on both sides. Now, I, was it just like? relationship or like marriage or I've never been bar- married I've been okay. engaged a few times I'm still looking for some of them engagement rings they in my house but I just can't <laughs> find them they was, they was some yeah a couple of them was real nice yeah 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 well uh, a couple engagement we didn't even get to the ring for sure it was like I want to marry you I'm like yeah. for real let's go get a ring yeah and we never got the ring <laughs> now when you say take time to know somebody I think that's why my uh me and my wife relationship lasted it was lasting like it is because okay. how long you been together we've been together for seven years married for two okay okay so it's like when we first met um i was staying out of town so we just talk on the phone every single day oh so we was getting to know each other you know what i'm saying prior to that i wasn't really i know a person but not really get to know a person okay you know because okay. when you i'm in texas she in detroit it's like what can you do besides talk that's that's true you gotta have conversations so I, that's when i like it's like when i came to move here you know full time it's like I've been knowing her forever. You know what I'm saying? I knew everything because about you, her. But but here's the thing. You had the conversations. Mm-hmm. And you had to have the conversations because there was a void and an emptiness that you felt disconnected when you didn't talk to mm-hmm. her. And you probably talked to her four, five, six, seven hours at a time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Till y'all phones went dead. <laughs> and, 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 but you got to know her. No, for sure. You for got sure. to know her pattern. You got to know, okay, at six o'clock, so she's just taking her shower, changing her clothes, mm-hmm. or she doing this or whatever okay i'm gonna call it 6 15 it got to the point probably where you felt some kind of way when you didn't talk to yeah, her yeah yeah fast yeah, yeah 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 we don't get to know people no at all not at all like you said everything's so fast even with with music with with radio with podcasts everything you want it right down there you, you ain't got the patience to watch a Absolutely. whole clip it gotta be 60 seconds or less you know what i'm saying so that's the that is one thing i know is and i'm i'm not you know what I'm saying old or whatever like that so but i have noticed like the difference between when i was a you know teenager to now a grasshopper yeah because when you on you like you said you on the phone fall asleep on the house phone yes like you know what I'm saying you breathe hard like and I'm, I'm gonna take you back further than that because i'm sure i'm i'm really really a lot older than you mm. when your mother would pick up the phone i know oh. damn well you ain't still on my phone exactly yep yep or when you ain't got that three-way so every time she calling it's busy Oh yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, man. yeah. Or you don't, <laughs> you don't want the phone to ring when you finally get a two way. Cause see, you went straight to three way. We went from one way to two ways mm-hmm. where you could click over and answer the phone. Mm-hmm. You would call the weather, and then they would call back, and you click over like hold on, and then okay, you leave the weather on hold, and eventually it would roll over and just hang up. Yeah. So, so I'm being really transparent. I'm 59 years old. Okay. So I go all the way back to. Where everybody on the block didn't have a phone, the neighbors come knocking on your door. Uh, my mom was saying, Queen, Queen, I said, can I use your phone for a minute? <laughs> These damn kids and got on my nerve. I want to order them some pizza. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna order pizza from Dino's Pizza, some old school pizza place. Yeah. So it, we got to get to know people. Mm-hmm, for sure, we got to get to know their last name. We don't know people's last name. We don't yeah, know middle name. We don't know favorite, favorite color. Yep. Oh, <laughs> come on now, nephew. Oh, that good stuff, Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, no, facts, facts, facts. Yeah, you got you just. And that's why a lot of failed relationships happen when you got kids involved. Because you just then, you know what I'm saying, screw that person, had a kid, and then you live with that person. Like, dog, who the fuck are you? COVID, <laughs> co- listen, COVID <laughs> did oh. so much mm-hmm. in people's life in terms of, because people really figured out that they love their children, but they didn't like them. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> For real. I love these kids, but I don't like these yeah, kids. Because sure. I got to be with these kids. All Every day. day, yeah. Um, no school, no, no, nothing. no, no school, and then the reality of 
things kicked in deeper because you really found out that what the teacher had been saying for the first, second, and third grade, mm -hmm. your child does learn differently. Mm -hmm. So let me gonna say it like oh, that. Yeah, yeah, your yeah, child yeah, yeah. learns at a different pace, and the teacher had been saying that you want to go up there with a uh, booty shorts and a bonnet <laughs> on. Exactly. This bitch, Miss Mitchell, keep talking about my son. No, learn at a different sure. pace. Ain't nothing wrong with Daquan, but. <laughs> When you at the homeschool, Daquan, you was like, okay, Daquan, count with me. One, yeah. two, three. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Be like, yeah. no, you got to say one, two, three. So <laughs> 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 <Show> you. <laughs> and make, it, 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 it brings out the dumbness in you. It but does. God damn, I don't know this shit. <laughs> like, man, my, my son in, was in the, when the COVID first happened, he was eighth, eighth, eighth grade. I might like, think. I might. Like, you know this whole word. He's like, yeah. I might like, thank God. Cause you. I ain't like, no shit. Like, and then it was like simple stuff, like four times two, and then you gotta show your work. Yeah. I'm like, dog, four times two. Like, it, it yeah. is. It is what it but is. But you gotta draw either four two times. Yeah, exactly. Yep. And then this this the part because my 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 grandson was was grown. He grown too. Mm -hmm. The way they do multiplication now with two numbers, mm -hmm. like forty times twenty, mm -hmm. and you do that. They got the z top number, the top top right number yeah. times the bottom right number, yeah. and then the top left number times the bottom left number. Then you box it out and see, add. See, them. that's too much. I'm used to put like the, the one on top of. Yeah, the, yeah, 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 yeah. No, oh no, baby. Uh, uh, it ain't even. <laughs> no, that's over. It's zero times zero is zero. Then four times two is eight. But oh. then you add that together, and then you come yeah. up with the eight hundred. I'm like, and then new math. Mm -hmm. If it's still only ten numbers. Mm -hmm. How's it new math? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Exactly. They want you to show everything. So, yeah, thank God he knew what he was doing. And I had you to, didn't know. Yeah, I didn't know a damn. I'm looking like, like he, he in 10th grade now, he going to the 10th. I'm like, I don't know. What the hell you doing, boy? But but that's that's how the world moves. Yeah, and that's, I felt bad. I remember I had uh, got a C. When, um, I was a grown man, but I did my uh, my brother uh, paper. He, he gave, my, he okay. gave me a C. <laughs> I'm finna go. I really thank y'all for having me. Like what the hell? You said what? <laughs> they gave me a C. Like he like yeah, you guys, you got me a C. I could have got a better grade than this. <laughs> he, he, <could've, laughs> he damn near flunked. Yeah. Shout out to did. my shout out to my brother Malcolm. I did his paper. They gave me a C. Like damn, I'm 23 in this month. <laughs> he said he could have flunked on his own for sure. Now, um, before we get to you know saying everything, uh, we talking uh, about everything. You can ask me anything. What's, what's you want. your you said? What's your dating life like? How is it? You know, you say you're 59. You play too how, much. <laughs> how is Dating life for uh, for Miss Coco, <sighs> and what do you expect out of a do right now? Like you know, it's a nice day outside. How 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 hot is it supposed to get today? I need to know if I need to. About eighty three, partly cloudy. Okay, <laughs> I may need to go change my clothes before I go to Bella Isle <laughs> and sit on the strip with a thirst of desperation. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I really ain't dating. Mm -hmm. I um, so the last date that I had mm -hmm. was with somebody that's a really, really good friend. Okay. Um, and he didn't move to Florida. He and the whole relationship or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I, I feel like for, and, and, and women are so discouraged and so are men, mm -hmm. but I feel like it is a disconnect and we keep hearing black men protect black women at all costs. Mm -hmm. But, um, we can't expect them to do something that they don't know how to do. Okay. If you haven't been taught how to be a protector, mm -hmm. how to be a provider, mm -hmm. how to be a, a procurer of sorts, okay. then I can't expect you to do that because you're dating me now. Yeah. If you don't know how to protect, you're not going to know how to protect. Exactly. If you don't yeah, know how to yeah. provide, you don't know how to provide. And then who taught you? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Who taught you how to protect? Was it your drunk uncle mm -hmm. on the holiday that <laughs> yeah. pulled a knife out his jacket? And, oh, oh, the motherfucker come up on you, you just joking. That's cool. But I don't think that's the universal protection yeah. that when I get a woman I want that I can protect her like this. Mm -hmm. And how do you provide? And what am I providing? Mm -hmm. Women want to feel safe and comfortable but if i've never been safe and comfortable yeah, how can I, yeah. I don't know how to make her feel comfortable i don't know what comfortable feels like i don't know what safe feels like so i can't give something that i don't have mm -hmm. and 
at, at my age, in terms of dating, there are just certain things I'm like, oh, okay, you want some sex. Yeah. Which is cool, but I'm not giving you sex. Yeah. Um, I recently, it was a cat that I liked, and I liked him for about 27 seconds. <laughs> and no, no, really, it was about 27 <laughs> seconds. Great cat and all that. We had great conversation or whatever. But it was a little verbal misunderstanding. Mm. I said I could possibly see you these two days because I was getting ready to go out of town and it was a miscommunication. Okay. And I called him and apologized or whatever, left a message, sent a text <laughs> message, and I haven't heard from him. Yeah. So it, it, it's okay mm. because I can't say, oh, I feel some kind of way because he might have been the one. Well, if he might have been the one, then he would have doubled back. Yeah, you can't. Yeah. I can't worry about, oh, what if he was the man <laughs> that was meant for me? Yeah. He was my provider and my protector. Exactly. No, if, if I don't know what something looks like, I can't give it to you. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and I think it's a lot of things that as black women, we expect from a man, but we don't do enough research. Yeah. We know, uh, where you live. We know what you drive. Mm -hmm. Um, we know about how many baby mamas you got. <laughs> um, we know where you work. We, we know all of those things, but we don't know how you worship. Mm -hmm. Um, do we have a spiritual connection? Um, are you a vegan or a vegetarian? Mm. Um, um, <clears throat> what is your relationship with women? When you get mad with women, how do you handle that conflict? Have you uh, physically abused a woman before? Yeah. Have you been physically <clears throat> abused? Were you sexually assaulted when you were growing up? Yeah, you still and, going through those and, things. And, and, and you still healing. Mm -hmm. And no, you might not just break out on the first date and just regurgitate all of that to, yeah, you, to yeah, a you person. Yeah, somebody off. Yeah, yeah but, but <laughs> at some point, we need to Just find those things. We need to find those things out. For sure. And then when you find them out, are they is it valuable information? Mm -hmm. So I mean um for me, I remember I was dating a guy and, and we had been we had been dating for a while. Mm -hmm. It's a few years ago. We had been dating for a while. And I told him that, hey, listen, I have been sexually assaulted and there's certain things that you can't say and or do to me yeah. because uh it, it take me to a yeah, place. Back a bad time. Yeah. Oh boy. So, and I knew by his conversation, you're like, yeah, because when I make love, I like to do this. And in my <laughs> mind, I'm like, you going to make me beat your ass. Yeah, 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 you can't do that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to get this lamp and bust you in the head mm -hmm. with it. So, I, I explained it to him. I was like, listen, you can't, if we making love, you can't hold my shoulders where I can't move. Yeah. Uh, You cannot put your hand in or around my neck yeah, in yeah, any true. form, especially nah. from the front. Now, if you hook in the necklace, <laughs> yeah. But if, if, if you in front of me and I can see your thumb go up around my neck, it, it's yeah, a yeah. trick. Stop it, stop it. Don't we do we, we going yeah. to tear this place up. For sure. So I told him and I explained it to him. Mm. Well, listen. We, it was going down. Mm. And um, I don't know if he didn't play the tape back. Or whatever, <laughs> yeah, sure. but he grabbed me, and I was like, "Don't do that." Yeah, I was really, really calm. Part of my therapy was kicking in. I was like, "Don't, don't do that." Mm -hmm. He's like, "Yeah, cause I'm gonna tell you right now." I, and and he said, "Don't make me take it." Yeah. Oh, and shit. listen. Yeah, you can't do it. When I tell you, when I came to, yeah. he was standing in the corner of my bedroom naked. Yeah. Shivering like a puppy, you know. <laughs> and, yeah. So he was just standing there, like you crazy, you crazy. Uh, yeah. And I was just sitting on the side of the bed, calm. I said, "What did you say?" Yeah, you didn't he didn't take that time to listen to what you had said. He said, "What?" I said, "What did you say?" And what did you do? He said, "I was holding you down." I said, "Okay." And then I said, "Don't make me take it." And I said, "There you go." Two strikes. <laughs> And and he was kind of light skinned and and listen, <laughs> ooh, he could have pressed charges. Yeah, oh, you were crazy. Yeah. Of what? <laughs> yeah, I could and, imagine. And yeah, I, I apologize. I was like, I was like, bro, listen, I'm I'm sorry. I I didn't mean it or yeah. whatever. But when somebody tell you stuff, yeah, you, gotta you gotta listen, listen. to yeah, it. Yeah, for sure. So that let me know, and I slowly kind of weaned myself away from it. And I told him, I said, listen, I think you're a great guy, but you're just not my great guy. Mm -hmm. And there's some things about just human relationships. That you have to learn, mm -hmm. but I couldn't expect him to protect me. Yeah, because he didn't understand the dynamics and the amount of damage mm -hmm. that he was dealing with. 
I'm I'm still kind of damaged. I'm healing, but I'm still damaged. So mm. if I don't know that, I'm like, no, nah, I ain't going. Mm -mm, I ain't going. No. Nah. And, and we, you know, women got a mouth, so they going to say something slick. We 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 have to do better. So yeah. I hear. When so it, when it, Oh, sorry. Go oh. ahead. No, when no. it's certain type of like when you're growing up and certain things that you went through, it could be as a kid or what you've seen, you know, saying visual with your parents. Can can that damage on yourself kind of like harm you forever? Could you never like release or let go to a dude? Like not in that situation where you say holding down, okay, that's understandable. But if you seen like your dad act a certain way towards your mom, for example, and Ooh. and that's like it's stuck, it's stuck in your mind. And whenever a dude approach you, you always think of that situation and it always mess mess you up to go to that next level. Can that be like hurtful in a way? It 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 is, but I want to heal from my hurt, mm -hmm. and I and I and and I think people should work on healing from their pain. And exactly. I know people say, "Well, it's hard to heal or whatever." Listen, because yeah, some people never heal. But healing is active. Mm -hmm. So so, I I I'm not gonna say I've been through more than anybody else, but I've been through a lot. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you've been through a lot. Mm -hmm. We've been through a lot. But at some point, you got to say, "Listen, I'm letting a ghost mm -hmm. control my feelings." I'm letting something that happened in my childhood still control me. I have to find peace and let that go. I got to I have to find peace and let that go. I have to find peace and let that go. I have to heal and I have to find peace and I have to let that go because if not you look back and and it's like Erica Badu song, Bag Lady, you gonna hurt your back. Yeah. Cause you got all these bags. You got mm -hmm. <laughs> bags when you was in the fifth grade, and the yeah, sixth exactly. grade, and the seventh grade, and when you was in high school and all this, and you got all these bags that you just can't constantly dragging around and there's no room for love. Mm -hmm. There's no room for love, there's no room for light, there's no room for laughter, it's no room to try new things yeah. and meet new people because everything is and when I hear people say this, saying I want to fight, mm -hmm. it is what it is. <laughs> it don't have to be that. Yeah, no, it don't. It don't. It don't. Yeah, well, that's just what I'm just saying. It is what it is. And, and I don't like to be around people with that kind of attitude. Mm -hmm. It is what it is. I'm just saying it is what it is. It is what it is to me is saying you have decided not to move forward. Yeah, I don't you do have it decided down. not to grow, mm -hmm. not to release and all of that. Yeah. So when people say, yeah, well, it is what it is in my mind. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so let's get back to this dating thing. So okay. <laughs> yeah, now, uh, yeah, because I've been a whole therapist. Yeah, yeah, but when you get older, can it be like can dating become desperate? Like you desperate to find somebody, be with somebody because you feel like I'm getting older. I'm getting older. I ain't found that right one, so you're just gonna settle for whatever. Some getting older does two things. It, it provides you with a certain amount of wisdom mm -hmm. and discernment if you open to wisdom and discernment. Mm -hmm. Then it can also close you off. To where you a bitter bill or a bitter betty mm. and everything is just like the person you said yeah well i want to meet somebody but all these men is trash yeah. and all they all they for the streets and uh they for the streets and i'm for the sheets and all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so you won't even allow yourself to meet somebody mm -hmm. so you got to be open and receptive mm -hmm. um i was telling my brother on the way here that i would date somebody that didn't look like me okay um, somebody that don't have a lot of melanin, mm -hmm. maybe. Yeah. Um, because I'm not gonna put my love in in one particular box. I'm saying the box, yeah. Based on my experiences. Mm -hmm. So for me, as I've gotten older, it's certain things that I look for, and certain things I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, oh, all right, and I, I'm not kind of open, mm -hmm. but it's things that I be like, no, I don't, I don't think that'll that'll work for me because you see beyond mm. the circumstance you see yeah. beyond the situation um i like a man that can you don't have to talk as much as me because yeah. we probably drive each other crazy <laughs> but you have to be able to some sort of conversation yeah and express what you're feeling yeah. we got to be able to have some healthy dialogue oh yeah and then we sure. got to agree to disagree. disagree yeah you got to it ain't gotta be like oh i hate you fuck you like, yeah get out my car yeah. <laughs> bitch get out my car yeah, yeah. there's some people down here put people out the car before i oh, listen <laughs> Listen. Okay, sidebar. For real. Tuesday. Was it two? Tuesday. I'm driving down Jefferson. I'm on, I'm headed east on Jefferson. I get to Jefferson and Chalmers. Yeah. I'm sitting there at the light waiting to turn. Mm. Waiting to turn. All of that. Why did a guy 
And I don't know if he pushed the young lady out the car. Oh, man. But she, he was driving, and she came out the car. Her body was spinning. They had a westbound on Jefferson. She was spinning on the ground. That's how fast he was God. going. And when she... Fi- don't, don't you dare laugh. Pause. <laughs> Fix it all, Jesus, right now. That's, that's bad. That's terrible. She was spinning hard. For real. Listen. I felt her skin because she was spinning hard. Let me not say it no more because oh, y'all bad. Y'all going to get a cycle. She was. And it's like she spun to the curb, right? Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, my God. I was on the phone. And I'm like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. My boy's like, what's wrong? This guy just kicked this lady out the car. She's spinning on the ground. Oh, shit. I threw an imaginary cape on. And I said, I got to make a U-turn. I done made a hard. Yeah. In a rental truck. Yeah. I'd have made the turn and came back. And I came back and I started going up and down streets. He made the uh, turn around. When I made the turn around, they had disappeared. Oh, shit. She was gone. Damn. And it was a guy standing at the bus stop. He was like, Coco. I said, hey, my man, did you? He was like, yeah, man. He said, I walked around the corner and came back and they was gone. Yeah. Damn. She had got up. I don't know what the circumstances were. Yeah. But they was going about 40 miles an hour. Man, I, I know, I know. Stop it, yeah. stop it. But that's stop. why you gotta be careful with the people you, people you took mess with, man. But you know, but you gotta know who it is. Yeah, yeah. So I, if I don't, if I don't know you for real, I ain't never threw nobody in the car, but I stopped somebody from jumping out the car before. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, and, while and, we were driving, she got so bad, like I'm gonna get out. I'm, gonna, I'm like, nigga, no. I'm, <laughs> I, I'm actually grabbing her and holding her from jumping out the car. But, but that, that was kind of toxic. <laughs> but, but see, okay. So once you say, okay, this toxic, this ain't working, and then you got to get to know somebody, and that's a whole nother conversation. Yeah. I got to know you. I got to know who you are. Mm-hmm. I got to know how you act in the face of adversity. Yeah. I got to know. If you smoke weed, do you go crazy? Yeah. I got to know. If you drink, If you do that honey, how you... I got to know if you do that honey pack, how you act. I got to know if you if how you acted if you didn't did whatever you did. Mm-hmm. Drunk some liquor. I need to know how substances change your behavior. Do oh, you, yeah, for sure. oh, do you get sleepy? Do you yeah. get combative? Do you want to cuss people out? Do you tear your shirt open and run in the yeah. middle of the street? Because yeah, 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 it's yeah. all, I done dated yep. all kinds. Yeah, I know my wife. That's why when she drinks, she's sensitive. So okay. I got to be careful what I say. Okay. Okay. She, if you look at her, like, you think I'm just drunk. Like, she, <laughs> she not, she not a drinker at all. So the Louis, oh, the okay. Louis, I know okay. one of them. Yeah. I know so one of them. So whenever she drinks, I just got to be just laughing. Like, <laughs> like, you know, can't be, can't say nothing bad about her. She gonna get pissed. See, but you know that. Yeah, I know that. So when she drink, I'm just, hey, go ahead, do you? Yeah, yep. Yeah. And then you gotta provide an exit where you won't. She gonna mm-hmm. think that you exited. Yeah. I hope you ain't listening. Um, <laughs> <laughs> she might listen to you because she know you on here. Okay. Well, uh, the views and opinions. Are <laughs> Yeah, but you definitely, like, I know her, so, hey, if you get messed up, it's going to be once every two years because she don't drink. Okay, and so, so lay on the bed. you got to get to know them, uh-huh. and you got to have a conversation. So, I have to date somebody that's willing to have a conversation mm-hmm. and be honest. If I tell you I'm not having sex mm-hmm. or I ain't had sex in X amount of years, mm-hmm. and your response is, oh, you ain't been with me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you automatically that. saying <laughs> you canceling out for whatever Every, reason. Yeah, for sure. You ain't asked me, is it medical reasons? Is it spiritual reasons? Or whatever. You just determined in your hey, mind hey, that you ain't hey, those messed up, messed up. We might not say it to you verbally, but we're going to tell our homeboys that she ain't did nothing, but nigga, watch me. See? See? <laughs> That's see? how it is, though. I ain't guilty. <laughs> <laughs> but in our mind, Bro, <laughs> we know by your actions if you moving towards getting to know me or you moving like yeah, yeah. she say she ain't did nothing about three years I'm finna blow her back up <laughs> for sure like watch I change that this honey pack and this Hennessy yeah HH <laughs> we gonna get down I, yeah. what is I'm the, glad what's I'm the glad. fixation with the honey pack though I, let's talk about it I don't know I guess I wouldn't do it well you got a friend you know somebody yeah. that did it yeah uh. <laughs> <laughs> So, couple, 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 couple uh, companions, you know, couple of homies, you know. But they say, yeah, it do it, it do the, it do the trick. You know, one of them told me make sure my kids ain't at home. You know, but yeah, so yeah, that's what I, yeah, we could, we couldn't do that. We and we never, <laughs> we never not have our kids though. Okay. Like okay. we, like, we like one of the few couples who have our kids all the time. That's a good thing. Sometimes like, we never get a break. When we do, we don't know what to do ourselves. We just be like, uh, I'm, be I'm coming back to get the kids. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. How old are your babies? Uh, fifteen. 
Well, he about to be 16 in December, so 16, okay. 6, and 1. Okay. She be two in December too. So. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So if you go off this year, sixteen, six, and two. Okay. So you, yeah, you be like, we got some free time. Yeah. He just be sitting there looking crazy. Then my like, oldest son, he never leaves, so he just like he did. Yeah. He be at the house all the time. He don't being, care what's going yeah, on. Yeah. If he ain't playing basketball or somewhere in school, he at home. He walk a path to the kitchen and back. Yeah. He got yeah. He got his basement. He got the whole basement down there, TV, game, oh, yeah, yeah. bathroom, everything. Oh, there. yeah. You, 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 see him, <laughs> you see him when he come upstairs. Exactly. He's like, hey, how y'all doing? <laughs> Grab a piece of bologna and go back. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Be on the phone with his little girlfriend all the time and all that stuff. Oh, well, that's it. That's what, listen, I, I would like to be on the phone with somebody talking. Yeah, now, let me, let me ask you, then we, I, want, I want to know a little bit about your growing up. But okay. I want to ask you, all right, my son, he be 16 in December. He got okay. his first little girlfriend. You know how that is. You in love. And uh, we, you know, and um, he he said something the other day. It was like a pack of girls, you know, saying doing a track and stuff, and they kept coming to the gym looking at him. Okay. And one of them approached him like, you know, uh, can I give my number? And he was like, No, I got a girlfriend. And as a father, I'm like, You got a girlfriend, but no. Okay. <laughs> no. Let him. Okay. Let I him. I want your opinion. That's what I said. I'm talking to you. Not, listen, listen. <laughs> Rudy trying to turn him into a little pimp or something. No, Listen. because it, it did. He was like, "Well, I see how you used to be," and he was probably thinking about me, how I did his mom or something. Well, let <laughs> let him be respectful. Yeah, and let him respect the boundaries that are in his relationship with the girl. Okay, okay. Because it's a couple things, um, and and it, the onus go on, on the men and the women. If this young lady felt comfortable walking up to your son asking him mm -hmm. for her phone number. Mm -hmm. Um, she might do that a lot. She she move a little different, yeah, yeah, and, no, and sure. I'm not gonna make her the villain, and and your son the hero. But I'm just saying she move a little different. Mm -hmm. And if your son is okay in dating and seeing the young lady that he's seeing, mm -hmm. then allow him that space. Okay, because gotcha. when you push it, you don't know what you're pushing him into. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now we talk about God talking about how, how you know nowadays, especially sets that can wait. Uh, listen, these little girls doing stuff oh, at 12, 11. But hold on, hold on. Don't put it on the girls. <coughs> well, yeah, you know, both it's, of it's, it's, Take two. It's, it's both ways. Yeah, yeah. It, it, listen. Um, they doing uh, stuff I was dreaming about. Listen. <laughs> and, and then you found out it was a nightmare and you want to go back. Because once you do it, you can't get it back. Yeah, and that's exactly what I told him. It's like crack. You're going to get that first high <laughs> and you're going you gonna to keep chasing it. Like, you know, you can't let it go. You can, though. It, it, see, and I, it's, it's different for me and the women. Yeah. So, okay. So it, it's different. I have been uh, what what is this twenty twenty two? I have not had um, any form of sex. Okay. Um, between two thousand seventeen and now, I've only had I had a physical exchange mm. and um two self exchanges between 2017 and now. Okay. So, um, after a while, if I get comfortable enough with somebody, I tell them that. And when they hear me with, <laughs> you, <laughs> you, what you telling me is you not even focus on anything else. You just focus on, on your body. Yeah. On, on the, the, the sex part. Yeah, that's it. So that's just like, if a guy tell me, he a vegan. Mm -hmm. I dated a guy that was a vegan. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, I'm not a vegan, but I respect you mm -hmm. being a vegan. Yeah. And because I do know how to cook vegan stuff, I make vegan gumbo and, and black eyed peas vegan and all mm -hmm. that stuff like that. When I would cook for him, I made sure it was different. Yeah, 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 and yeah. he had to get to the point where he trusted me because he was like, you know, people say that. I said, no, I respect the fact that you're a vegan. Mm -hmm. And I know it's a spiritual journey, a physical journey, whatever. And I would not do anything to taint that. I wouldn't take the the this gumbo that got chicken or whatever in it and put the spoon in it. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. I can't tell him, yeah, you're a vegan, not that's, but you ain't tasting my uh, collard greens with smoked turkey in it. <laughs> yeah, well, it's like you pushing the envelope <laughs> no, for, sure. for what somebody believes. So I just don't even share the information no more. Mm. I just kind of sit back and chill. Mm. And then people be like, you lying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, why can't? <laughs> with anything, if a person say they don't drink no more, they don't smoke cigarettes no more, they don't smoke crack, or they don't do this <laughs> yeah. or whatever. Why we can't just respect Spe the person's yeah, boundaries? Yeah. Why do we have to be the person to say, oh, you can have a drink. Yeah, uh, yeah, you ain't yeah. had a drink in five months. Yeah. That one drink going to send them back, back spur, yeah, spiraling. Yeah. Like, yeah, Bleh. for sure. For sure. Everybody can't do that. No, so that's a fact. So leave people where they're at. Mm -hmm. I, I do want to date. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I prefer 
He could be a little younger. Yeah. Like I'm 59. He could be like yeah, I seen one of your, 45. Uh, yeah, I seen uh, one of your stand-ups. You were saying <laughs> <laughs> it can't be you know with all the little uh, rings, oh, all on the rings on, yeah. whole bunch of keys on. No, and well, he got can... he got that old man boy. Let me tell you something. Yeah. Hey, you say he had the, uh, the all green outfit on. Yes, <laughs> and the pants pulled up, and one of his click clack stuck to the inside of his leg because <laughs> it then fell out the bottom of his drawers. Yeah. I don't want that. Oh man, I don't want that. Now uh, I want to know a little bit about you growing up. Okay. I, like I said, you from uh, Holland Park. HB for uh, life. I know you uh you graduated from Holland Park Community High School, class of 1980. 80. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You did a lot of research. A little bit, a little bit. Try <laughs> to. <laughs> but t tell me how it was. Who was at the house? Siblings, mom, dad. Like, how was it oh for a young God. couple? Okay, so, all right, here we go. This, this, it get thick. <laughs> so, I grew up in my house, in my immediate household. Mm -hmm. I had one sister. Mm -hmm. I had one, one sister. She was 10 years older than me. Okay. Um, um, I knew about the struggles, but my mother was a nurse. Okay. And but and she was divorced. My father worked for the government. Okay. So I had, you know, I had challenges, but I didn't have a lot of financial challenges or whatever. Mm -hmm. But okay, the reason I say that and broke it down like that, cause um later on my mother uh married a man that had twelve children. Okay. Um my father that raised me married uh a beautiful amazing woman that had six children mm. um I, I later found out a gentleman um who they said was my biological father mm. had 10 children yes yeah, so, so you, you got 10 12 that's 22, 22 plus the six that's 28, 28 plus my sister that grew up in the house with me that's 29 yeah, yeah. so i went from <laughs> one in-house sibling Damn. To listening to the family, you know how the family be at the cookout and you supposed to go in the kitchen and take the ribs in the kitchen, put them in the stove and come back out. But you step behind the screen door and be listening. Yeah, for sure. Anybody tell her who her real daddy's supposed to be? Damn. <laughs> that, that hurt, you thought John was your dad. I'm like, what? I look just like him. Wait a minute. Yeah. You know she looked just like the so-and-so. Yeah. And I'm like, oh. So it was it was a lot of conversations, a lot of dialogue. Mm. But presently, I have um, a bunch of my siblings, and we I don't like the word step. Yeah, so yeah, they're yeah. my bonus sisters and brothers, and we got a great healthy relationship. Mm. We had a conversation, and people always want to know. So you say so and so is your brother? Mm. Um, how's y'all related? I be yeah. like, how are you related to your brother? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, no, for real. Oh, I'm for real. Yeah. Because I'm not going to stand up here and have a whole, well, see, my mom. Yeah, that I'm not down. Do yeah, no. But they, he, yep, yep, yep. That's yeah. that's what, what do you want me to tell yeah, you? Exactly. And no matter what I tell you, you're still going to walk away with whatever you think uh -huh. to be anyway. Yeah, it's just yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I ain't yeah, having yeah. that conversation. Yeah, one but, to 29, dang. Yeah, so <laughs> it, growing up was kind of interesting. Mm. I was I was kind of a nerd, but I had a lot of mouth. My friends say I was a comedian in high school. Mm. Um, I sang in the choir. Um, I did some acting. Mm. Um, I was on the track team. I threw the shot put in the discus. I got my varsity track letter that I keep saying I'm going to have put on the varsity uh, jacket. I mm. do need me a varsity jacket because I got my track letter. Yeah. And then my sister passed. She also went to Highland Park, and she mm. was in the band. So I got her blue and white H. Mm. And then I got my H from Highland Park. Mm. But growing up, was kind of it was it was challenging because mm. I was a fat girl. Yeah. And they used to be like, you got a pretty face. Bud. Oh, yeah. That, 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 you got <laughs> yeah, a pretty you face. That. So, the guy, I remember one guy that I liked a lot. Um, my mother would let him come to the house and he he would come over and mm. talk or whatever. He liked me, but he didn't want nobody to know that he no, liked yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then it was another cat um, that liked me. And he would walk all the way from one side of Highland Park to the other side of Highland Park. Yeah. But, um... He liked me as well. Okay. But the thing was, he didn't want nobody to know that he liked me. So yeah. it was it was at yeah. least three or four guys during my uh growing up, probably more than that, that liked me, but yeah, I was, but the, I was yeah, the fat girl. Yeah, 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 yeah. So now I'm like, okay, so now when I see him now, mm. some of them is uh built like an Easter egg too. <laughs> Like what happened to you, brother? Yeah. Oh, oh. One, one of them. Listen, one of them was real bold. I, I recently saw him. He was like, "Hey, how you doing?" And, and the funny part was, <laughs> he was such a athlete in mm. school. So he was like, he was an athlete, but 
he really didn't play sports. Okay. But he was built like an action figure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, know, yeah. he was just. G.I. Joe is. Did, oh, my goodness. <laughs> like, real American hero. He was <laughs> that. But now, not so much, right? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I saw him. He was like, hey, what's up? How you doing? You looking good. I'm like, hey, how you doing? You changed. And, and, <laughs> and, 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 and so. I recognized him, but he was like, yeah, you know, what's going on? How you been or whatever? And I started laughing. He said, why are you laughing? I said, I remember how you used to tease me in school. Mm -hmm. He told me, I won't apologize for that. I said, no, I'm good. <laughs> I said, I'm really, really good. Yeah. I said, I'm, I'm good. I'm in a good place. And I ain't, I ain't tripping. Mm. I, I, I'm not tripping. He was like, yeah, so uh, since I'm big, nah, you big, we should be <laughs> no. together. No, that math ain't math, bro. <laughs> that, 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 that math ain't, they, because yeah. my bigness then kind of settled, you yeah. know what I'm saying? And I'm still working on parts of it. Yours ain't mm. settled yeah. right, yeah. It's, yeah, you know. It. Now, I'm, uh, it's funny you say that, because <laughs> me and my uncle, we, 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 talk, we talk stuff about respecting your fat. Oh, you got to. Yeah, you got to. You got to respect your fat. A lot of, it's a lot of women out here and dudes who disrespect their fat. See, okay, let me tell you what a disrespect. <laughs> See, you got to, first of all, you got to respect your body. No, you got to. And you got to know what work for you and what don't. Like, I see a lot of young ladies. I be like, she okay. She wearing that. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't think I could wear it because it wouldn't be comfortable. Mm -hmm. Like, full disclosure, I really don't like underwear. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I, I wear a, a bra because I have to. <laughs> but believe me, every chance I yeah, get. Man, I talk about my wife. She be like that. So it's coming to home. Ah. You, don't, you don't understand. <laughs> no, Listen, you, you know why? That thing. Listen, you know why? Tie some around your body and wear it for 12 hours. Mm -hmm. You will snatch it off. Mm -hmm. I have unhooked my bra in traffic on Gratiot, <laughs> on Jefferson, mm -hmm. on Telegraph, and unhooked it and threw it. Yeah. <laughs> and, and there are times when I don't wear a bra and I'm out in public looking like a soft lesbian because I got a big hoodie on. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! I I got a big hoodie on, and then I got my pockets tucked in my hoodie, pulling it like this. Yeah. And people be like, "Hey, Coco!" I be like, "Why you want to speak now? You yeah. see, I'm trying to get my wings and get <laughs> yeah, the hell yeah, off, yeah, yeah. catch up with my crowd." Yeah. But I don't like underwear, so I know when I when I have to wear heavy duty underwear, mm. it may be for an event, and I got a particular article of clothing I got to put on. But I ain't mm. gonna keep it on but a minute. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the midriff tops. Kudos to all the. BBWs that's wearing the midriff tops with their stomach out, mm. that's uncomfortable to me. Yeah. I done tried it. I was in my house and I took a top and tucked it. I said, I don't like the way this yeah. is pulling down on my stomach. I don't, it felt like I was holding a, yeah. a gun or something. I ain't like that feeling. Yeah, for sure. So if it feel right, yeah. if it don't feel right, I'm not wearing it. Uh -huh. But you got to respect the dimensions of your body. Mm. First of all, you got to respect them in terms of hygiene. Mm. Oh, yeah. Because when you're a big person, Whenever it's a room, or older in the room, they look at you. Mm -hmm. I don't give a damn. Damn, it's all bad. I don't <laughs> give, sir, sir, <laughs> sir, you don't understand. We in this space, if it was 20 people down here and somebody <laughs> came down here and, and you smell a hint of butt crack, mm -hmm. just a, a flick, just a little bit. it's just a hoof of butt crack. Because butt crack smells so disrespectful. So it used to be the sit down air, but sometimes it's the stand up air too. Mm -hmm. And you smell a hint of butt crack, everybody's eyes going to shift to the biggest person in the room <laughs> and kind of look at them and then look away. Yeah. Like, mm. no, nah, I might not be them. Yeah. Whenever it's, a, I'm telling you, whenever it's an older, oh if my it's God. anybody older, they look at the big person. Yeah. <laughs> because I clean so thorough. I listen. Yeah. Uh, I'm down through there. I'm up around through there. I got man. two or three different soaps that I use. Man. I use this soap Dang, for that. Dang, just like that. My, my, <laughs> my wife being there. I'm talking about him. I swear to God, no lie. He know. She take about four showers a day. You have to. She got OCD when it comes to that. Like, she can just... Now, is she a woman of size? She a thick nah, girl? Uh, no, she not. No. Nah, nah. Okay. But she just... You want to. Yeah. She, you listen. You perspire all up under here, up yeah, under your yeah. breast. Listen. The when it's hot, them, uh, like... they, they'll get slick on you. You got to... <laughs> It be feeling like a catfish. Yeah. You gotta hold these boys up, yeah. soapy them, ranch them. You gotta ranch them, yeah. then dry them, 
<laughs> then you got to put some deodorant on, on them that yeah. ain't going to mess up your skin. And then you got to hold them up yeah. till they dry. Yeah. <laughs> then you got to let that dry. Then you got to go on down through there, up around the creases. Around the corner, yeah. You got you to gotta hit them spots good. Yeah. You got to hit the back of the legs. It is a process. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. And that's like dudes. Like, I be, I, I, I tell my, uh, my, uh, my little son, like, no, you got to get them toes. You got to get the legs. Oh, yeah. Hand, hand, hand. I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> like, you got to get everything, brother. You you, you got to. And, Some the, people ain't, and right. the feet. Yeah, you got to. Yeah. Oh, yeah. no, you do. You do. You do. You got to get them feet. I remember, I ain't going to say no names, but we was at home one day, and somebody, they had no socks. So I'm like, God, me, me and my wife texting, like, you smell them feet? <laughs> like, <laughs> Like God damn! <laughs> we would just have a whole text session about the feet, like dog. No, we gotta listen, tell that person to leave. <laughs> I worked with somebody, and his, his feet smelled like. Oh my god! It smelled like I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna describe it to you. <laughs> and um, worked with him, mm -hmm. and he came um to work one day, mm -hmm. and sat down, <laughs> and he always thought every woman wanted him. Mm -hmm. And, and had he not had that 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 every woman want me temperament, mm. I probably would have told him that his feet smelled like oh. Greek yogurt. Yeah, damn, that's a bad hot day. Greek yogurt. <laughs> that's terrible. Hummus. His we feet smelled like. <laughs> That's terrible. So he he would sit there, and I'm like, his feet stink. And mm. I didn't when I first smelled it. I'm like. I know them ain't your feet. Yeah. I'm, I'm like, them ain't my feet. I know them ain't my feet. <laughs> ain't mine, yeah. Them ain't my feet. Because I don't like to wear socks either, but I'll get some deodorant. I got a stick deodorant that mm. if I'm working out, I'm going somewhere and I ain't got no socks on, I put a swipe of deodorant inside my shoe mm. and a swipe of under my feet. Mm -hmm. And I gone. Y'all hey, can never say cocoa smell. No. <laughs> At all, ever. No, listen. I've had three surgeries. And I listen, I'm talking about coming out to anesthesia like, can I take a shower? <laughs> But that's sure. how my, my, my grandmother no. and, my, and my mama raised me like yes, that. Yes, yes, so this person's sure. feet used to stink, and um, <laughs> it, it it was acidic. It had a little like it was it was like Greek yogurt with three <laughs> drops of pickles or vinegar in them. Yeah, man. Yeah. Listen, you got, you got when you, you got go when, when you a big person, you got to lift everything you lift up. You got to yeah. wash it. Rinse it mm. and dry. It. If yeah. not, it'd be slick like a catfish. Yeah, for it, sure. It, it, for like it. a like a sardine or olive or something. Yeah. You got you you got to wash it. You yeah. ain't, ain't no ain't no getting around it. And even if you're not a big person, so let me talk about that. Can I talk about uh, women and, and keeping their body area? Yo, clean? Go ahead, get them. Yeah, get them some game real quick. They Ladies, need listen, probably. I love you. <laughs> you you amazing. And and I'm finna go real uh. Real deep, listen, ladies. You are you are so beautiful, and, <laughs> and I don't Auntie don't mean no disrespect, but um and and shout out to the women that understand what I'm saying. <laughs> you have to drink a lot of water. Mm -hmm. You got to drink. Water has dual purposes. It's to hydrate you, mm -hmm. and it's to cleanse you. Okay. You gotta get in the water. You can't put your foot up on the side of a sink and wash like you're washing out some socks you mm -hmm. gotta get in the water mm -hmm. now all the <laughs> bubbles and all that stuff you put in your water you can't put them in your lady area because unless it's made a certain way it will mm -hmm. throw your ph to hell off okay. so if you have to just run a tub with some warm water and put some old school baking soda in the water yeah. <laughs> it will help clean you mm -hmm. y'all gotta sit in some water because yeah. y'all run around here y'all spraying it with body spray yeah. <laughs> spraying it with the odorant and then y'all going to get it steamed y'all sitting on bay leaves and oregano and dill seed and i ain't hating on nobody the, the steam people they got the steam doing the v steam i get all of that mm. but listen you can't keep steaming it and boiling it if you're not washing it <laughs> exactly. and taking care of it and then the other part is who is you sleeping with I said who is you oh, sleeping yeah, with yeah, yeah. who is depositing themselves into you because mm, if you having multiple partners and they got multiple partners you got a lot and, of ain't yeah. nobody wearing no condoms ain't nobody having a, a, a safer sex mm. then whoever he or she with I don't care if they're using the strap how they clean that strap are they cleaning the strap yeah. okay 
the rose, the rose, you got to prune the rose and clean it sometimes. You, yeah. you, be using my- you got the rose, you got to wash that rose, you got to rinse that rose off. <laughs> all, all roses. What was the Andre 3000 uh, Outcast song? Roses really smell oh, like yeah. boo boo. Oh, boo, yeah. Boo. And it will. <laughs> that rose will tell on you. Oh, man. Hey. <laughs> It's funny that you say you talk about how young ladies should clean themselves. I just said this story probably like two episodes ago. But my first time with somebody, that smell was the like the worst smell I smelled in my life. Wow. And I was a young man, so I'm like, what the hell is that? Wow. Now leading up to it, the whole the whole thing was bad. The whole story was bad. Uh, <laughs> wait, uh uh-uh, uh, wait a minute. You see the look on my face? <laughs> yeah, cause it was it was my uh I called my cousin, but he like he a close friend of ours. And his girlfriend stayed next door to us. So he used to be doing his little cheating stuff. Okay. So he'd come okay. over and put a whole bunch of condoms in my drawer. Okay. Boom, boom, boom. And he'll leave. So the particular day, me and the girl about to do the do. This is my first time. I'm like, oh, yes. Thank okay, you. how old were you? I was 17. Okay. So okay. I've been waiting for this for a long time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, all right, babe, my mom at work. My little brother, I told him to stay out in the living room. And um, I went to the bathroom to prep myself, you know, look in the mirror and stuff like, yeah, Shia, you got Wait, this. Wait, hold on, hold on. <laughs> oh, no, you're not going to just glid over that. Not glide. You ain't going to just glid over that. How you prep yourself? What you, you do? Oh, you ready? You can do this, man. You know, because I heard the story. <laughs> oh, you about, had to talk. You yeah, had to talk. I heard the story about your first time be the worst time and Did stuff. Did you talk to your mans too down there? No, just me. Okay, I, yeah, just, just me. Talk. Okay, because yeah, okay, a lot of men be like, hey, man, yeah, you got this. Yeah. And they be, <laughs> they be air hunting. You, you got be- this, dog. <laughs> No, I just told myself. So while I went back in the room, like, mind you, my cousin put condoms in my drawer. Okay. So she was like, I don't know we can do this. I'm like, what you talking about? And she pulled out a Magnum XL. I haven't did it before. Just so, tied knot in it. So in my head, I'm like, I don't know if I can wear that. Like, tied knot in it like a balloon. You know how you do a balloon? <laughs> no, I took it and threw it. Like, no, we ain't doing that. Let me get that lifestyle. <laughs> So I, yeah, I was mad. Like, why does nigga leave an XL in my drawer? I, don't, I never did nothing before. I ain't even tried that one on. So I ain't about to do it today. So yeah, well, I did that. And then as soon as she took the pants off, it was like the worst odor I ever smelled in my life. I'm like, is it supposed to smell like this? What is it? Okay. <laughs> and yeah, she got mad at me because I wasn't, I couldn't perform. So, <laughs> so, what did this? It... It's my fish. Like, it was mm. straight up fish. She ain't wash it. She ain't know. It was straight up fish. You know how many women don't really know how to wash themselves? Oh, no. I heard. It, <laughs> so, bef- before I got into, um, <laughs> before I got into um, comedy and radio, mm. I was a nurse, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just, I was going to say something about that. Yeah, yeah I, I, I was a nurse. And um, um, a lot of women still, because mm. I still pop in and out and do events and mental health and Mm. substance abuse and all that but it's a lot of women that really don't know how to wash themselves Mm -hmm. and from time to time i'm on social media and it pop up like it's a lot of women don't know how many holes Mm. that they have Mm. they think the (laughs) the urine and the vagina the same hole Mm -hmm. Uh, they think they had a period and urinate out the same hole. They really don't know how many holes they got. Mm-hmm. So um, I remember before the world shut down, I was talking to some young ladies. And they weren't all young. I take that back. I was doing a vagina monologue. I was directing a vagina monologue. Mm-hmm. And I told the women, I said, listen, talking about this, because the vagina monologue talks about the vagina. And they use all the slang terms for mm-hmm. the vagina. And I told the women in my group, I said, I want you to go home, go to the beauty supply of the dollar store and get a handheld mirror and go home and look at it. Mm-hmm. 50% of the women in was like, ugh. Yeah. I said, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> I said, y'all got partners, husbands, whatever. If you want them to look at it, mm-hmm. you want to see what they see. Mm-hmm. I said, but in order for us to get to where we need to get to, in the vagina monologue, we need to know what we're talking about. So you need to look at the tone, the texture, see how I look. Do it look like an octopus? Does it look like a snail? Does it look like a turtle? You need to know yeah, what it looked like, the texture. I said, touch it. I said, not just because a lot of women, for real, I ain't, I ain't trying to. A lot of women, only time they touch it is to wash it. That's and it. they throw their panties on. They don't touch it. They don't, they don't look at it. Mm. You got to look at it. 
You got to put a mirror up and be like, hey, how you doing? <laughs> All right, I'm taking you to the doctor this week. Uh-uh, don't get scared. We're going to be okay. Yeah, for sure. We're we going to be all right. We're going to be okay. Uh, okay, we we going swimming. All right, I'm going to put you in a swimsuit. Okay, I'm just letting you. <laughs> get you together. I'm, I'm, I want you to be together. Now, yeah. listen, you know how I do, and I ain't shaving nothing. We're going to go, oh, you smiling. Now, yeah, because, you know, I ain't I ain't doing no Brazilian wax. If the hot wax get on me, it's because the candle fell. You know, we ain't finna do that. <laughs> <laughs> so, but but we gotta have those conversations, yeah. and women have to have those conversations with each other. Women have to have those conversations with men, and women mm. have to have that conversation if they got daughters. You yeah. you got to, oh, you got to, yeah, and that's that's the thing. Uh, talk to your kids, uh, like I said, old school grandma, mom, talk to you, let you yeah. know about you know saying not only cooking, you know, but clean. But yourself. they didn't tell you. My mama told me, don't do it, don't don't. You better not have sex. Yeah, I'm like. Well, what is it so bad? Because as I got older, I'm like, well, my friends is having sex. Yeah. What am I missing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. I, you know, if <laughs> wasn't nothing, I really did. <laughs> yeah. It, it wasn't, a, it, I don't want to say it wasn't nothing, but I remember the first person I had sex with, and I was a virgin. I was 18, and he didn't think I was a virgin because I got on top. Mm-hmm. But I had been sneaking and reading these adult books mm-hmm. um, that somebody close to me on and it described how to mount his manhood perfectly yeah. i said oh wait a minute <laughs> <laughs> let me go ahead and see what this is about now you got you got to understand this the late 70s yeah she gently took him <laughs> she straddled his manhood with thriving aggression <laughs> He began to pant through his nostrils, yeah. awaiting her warm, slithery texture. I said, shit, wait. <laughs> Get hot just reading it. <laughs> I did. I said, wait a minute. Yeah. A slithery texture. It's like a pocketbook. That's yeah. why they call it a pocketbook. Yeah, for sure. But you, you learn. You grow. Yeah, no, you, you learn. Yeah, for sure, for sure. You, you learn. You be like, okay. So I'm, Ladies, I'm I good. hope y'all uh, pay attention to what uh, Miss Coco said. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Gave y'all some free game real quick. Tap in, y'all. Yeah, sit sit in the water. Relax it. We sit in the water. Yeah. Relaxing in the water. Treat Don't, it right. You can't give it to everybody. Yeah, for sure. It, it's like good food. You can't eat good food every yeah. day. Some days you, some, you can't eat crab boils and, <laughs> and all that every day some days you just gotta have a salad yeah no for sure yeah yeah, yeah. It, it definitely your intake will have a, a certain smell coming out baby yeah and you, the word thing is important yeah. oh that's listen. for dudes too like we drink a lot of water with that ph yeah yeah because me and y'all out here giving women bacteria vaginosis google that word yeah. it's called bv y'all out here y'all got multiple partners y'all diet consists of cognac <laughs> lamb chops <laughs> crab boils weed and a honey pack that's your damn <laughs> diet <laughs> Exactly, and yeah. y'all it's out a, here, uh, when y'all ejaculate, look like snuff coming out y'all thing. Damn. And y'all, y'all need to get it together. Oh, y'all shit. out here giving women bacteria vaginosis, and then you, you going in the garage and the basement at the same time. You ain't even washing the hookup off. You didn't yeah. pull out the garage and just <laughs> ran around and jumped in her basement. And she ain't stopped you. She ain't took a Clorox wipe or nothing and wiped it off. Yeah, for y'all just going. I'm sorry. God, okay. Now, okay. um. <laughs> Like I, I want to get to the comedy, but I want to talk about something because my introduction to you was the morning show on WJLB with you, wow. rest in peace, Mr. Chase, and Foolish. And I just remember, like, you know, riding to school and <laughs> listening. And then when I got older, taking my brother to school, listening, going to work, like, y'all were our wake up in the morning. You know, you, you uh, Mr. Chase telling you, you know, saying, hey, you a Pisces, you ain't shit. <laughs> Man, <laughs> like, and then uh, Foolish with, like, the word of the day, deodorant, like, de- <laughs> deodorant. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, D ain't play. He ain't pay his bill. D over red. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. It was. It was always like. It was That's all, a good one, though. Yeah, yeah. It was always good hearing y'all in the morning. Like that was the introduction to a lot of people morning. So like, how was that for you working with with them too? And and then you can't uh, forget about Flo and Reggie Red. All of that. And all stuff like that. that. So so how was that? And how did you uh you guys team up and stuff like talk about that? Uh, radio was amazing. Mm. Right. That that radio was amazing. Mm. Um. You know, radio has changed and, lot, and yeah. they shifted to podcasts. You know, podcasts used to be the thing that people would say every now and then. They were like, no, there's no way that somebody's going to be able to do a show in the basement or in a car or in a restaurant or whatever. How's that possible? Mm-hmm. But we see everything has come to fruition. Mm-hmm. Um, I learned a lot. Mm-hmm. I learned a lot about myself. 
about working with other people mm. every day, the same person. So, you know, they likes, they dislikes, um, when things didn't go well in their household, we all brought it to the show. Mm. Cause you get up at four o'clock in the morning, you got to be there at five thirty in the morning. And sometimes you with them five, six, seven hours a day, then you have to leave and then you have to come back and be with them or you take a trip or you go out of town. We went to WrestleMania and we would go do press junkets for movies or whatever. So they became a part of your family. Mm -hmm. So they knew all the stuff. They knew all the stuff that was going on. They know about your relationships. They know about your dating. They know about your habits and, and you just develop a relationship. Mm -hmm. I learned about a lot of entertainers, a lot of, a lot of actors, a lot of entertainers or whatever when you remove the exterior so people always say oh when i'm around an entertainer i treat him regular we say that but once you take away the surface but mm. some people's surface is deeper than other people's surface mm. so it just elbow when i met him i was like i told my daughter i said okay <laughs> listen i said we interviewing Idris elbow yeah. at the studio she was like, what? Because <laughs> she loved it. Just yeah, hell, right? sure, yeah. And I love my daughter, but my daughter has um, a different perception of time. Okay. Um, 8 o'clock a.m. Mm -hmm. is sort of 9 a.m. to her. It's mm -hmm. a diff Unless it's really some business. Yeah. Like, like what she does in her professional life, yeah. But other than that, it's kind of different. So I said, okay, we got to get up. Because the station had moved out to Farmington. Mm -hmm. And at that time, I was living in Midtown. So mm -hmm. I said, okay, listen. Um, we got to be up and get there early. Okay. Baby, listen, I think my daughter was up at 3.30. <laughs> Wait, nice. She was up, dressed, ready, all of that. And when we got there, um, you know, she was sitting there chilling. And he came in, and I was like... <laughs> <laughs> Now I've been. It, it's a few people that then took me over the top. I was like... Mm. <laughs> How are you? I'm like, mm -hmm. I was like, am I drunk? Yeah. And he said, who is this beautiful lady? I said, uh, and I think somewhere on YouTube you could find an interview. I said, this is my daughter. Mm. And he went over there and my daughter was like, mm -hmm. <laughs> well, yeah. and in my mind, I'm like, okay, I can hear like, because <laughs> listen, he made the men in the room shift their energy yeah. you know when a man come in the room yeah, you and, and you, 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 you chest know, out you like, chest yeah. out <laughs> like, all right. and, and all of that and he <laughs> he didn't have nothing flashy on he had on some jeans and i think a button-up shirt wasn't yeah. a lot of jewelry and all that but he just came yeah. in like hey what's up how y'all doing blah 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 da, 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 da. and i was like <sighs> was this doing the wire like no this was after the wire okay um after his movie Taken. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. With, the uh, Takers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With Chris Brown. Yeah, and, yeah, 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 yeah. Michael Ely. Yes, yes. It was after that. So he was working on something else, but he was in that. Um, when I met Rick James, mm -hmm. same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, Rick James, uh, George Clinton. Um, it's been a few. Ice T. Mm -hmm. um, it's been a few people. I was like, Okay. <laughs> and then and then with Puff Daddy we had this ongoing like thing back and forth mm. and by me being a comedian comedians and hip hop artists mm. have a strong connection Connect, yeah, for sure. because we tell jokes about the stuff that they rap about mm -hmm. so Ludacris and all them cats they knew who me and Foolish were because we had done Comic View and we had done Def Jam so they knew who we were and you know I remember certain artists would come in and they'd be like you and they start doing their hand like pulling the yeah, bottle yeah, out I, remember, yeah, I was going to talk about the air so put a whole like, drink oh, out that way they like oh man I got to get a picture with her and I'm thinking but you saw it so they're like no yeah. well you did that oh man uh, yeah. I was <laughs> at my crib and I was duh, duh, duh. man I had to keep I keep playing that over and over yeah. and I'm like Wow. Yeah, because TK Kirkland was talking about that, like how he had a close relationship with Cash Money and Lil Wayne and Baby and stuff like that. All of them. Yeah, because he used to them. go on tour at NWA and stuff like that back in the day. All of them. They be like, hey, what you doing? We going to be in so-and-so. Tomorrow I'll be like, oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so you good. So if you happen to be in the city mm -hmm. and they were performing, you know, hey, I'm going to be there. I'm gonna, you going to be in Cleveland? Yeah, I'm going to be at the comedy club. I'm going to be there. And you show up. Yeah. And they, you good. You good. What hotel you stay in? You eat. You this, you that. So it was like a relationship. For sure. It was a whole relationship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, when, um, it, of course, uh, uh, the Breakfast Club, 
went and went and, and kind of like was it what's the word syndicated they they were sending yes yeah, so yeah I, I i think at first when it happened a lot of people from the city was kind of like pissed off about it so let me let me straighten <laughs> up my seat yeah. so when you 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 know the shift is going on you know the change is going on mm. um the evolution of of radio was happening mm. and when you have meetings and the powers that be are in the meeting saying, you know, because this is what's going on and this group is really doing good. And I'm like, but what about us? Mm -hmm. So to have a meeting and had the powers that be tell you y'all. Okay. Mm -hmm. But this group is better. Yeah. Or y'all do this, but y'all need to do this like this mm -hmm. or, Oh, this is what y'all doing. But y'all ain't never thought about doing it that way. I'm yeah. like, so we actually have a meeting and y'all call us in a meeting to basically tell us we okay, but we ain't shit, yeah. but we got great numbers, but y'all yeah. can do better. Exactly, yeah. So you kind of knew it was coming. Mm -hmm. Um, they started running the breakfast club, uh, on Saturdays, yeah. um, Saturday mornings. Okay. And I was doing, um, um, I was doing Monday through Friday on GLB. Then I was doing Saturdays on MXD from 10 to two. So on the way in, I would be hearing the breakfast club rerun mm. on, um, on the, uh, radio. Yeah. And I, I'm like, yeah, they coming. Yeah. You knew so it. when they let me go, I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. It's like, we ha have a seat. I'm like, no, nah, I don't want to yeah, sit down. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, no, we want you to have a seat. I said, look, did this here. And I glanced over <laughs> and one of the managers had a, a packet uh, my severance pack and all that stuff on the table. I said, oh, that's my name. I picked it up. He was like, well, wait a minute. I said, but this is my name. So that means everything in here is Mom. about me. Yeah, 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 for sure. So I picked it up and he was looking like, and I'm looking at him like, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't make me hear it tell me nothing. Yeah, for sure. I, so yeah. I picked my packet up. My other manager was like, well, you're going to have to give me a key. I said, no problem. I think I didn't show, because yeah, so, people want you to be remorseful yeah, yeah, when yeah, they get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh, it's okay. He was kind of cool about it. Yeah. I, it was January to some 2014. I remember it. I got my packet. Um, it was freezing outside. Uh, I put my jacket on. Um, I said, okay, we'll ride down the elevator. When we got on the elevator, he was like, if you need anything, let me know. I'm saying, I'm good. Yeah. Gave him the key and walked out the door, went on about my business. I don't think I got to... We was on Halstead and 12 Mile. I don't think I got to uh, the corner before my phone started ringing. It was people that worked there. Mm. I'm like, I'm okay. Just call me later. Because I had to process what yeah, went no, on. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, because it's yeah. been, y'all was doing that for a lot, for, you know, a lot of years. I started in 96. Well, yeah. I started officially in 96, but I would go in and sit in and sit in with Frankie and sit in with Mason, whatever. But mm. I officially started in 96. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Don't, now, don't you feel like that kind of like, when that happened, that kind of like took away from Detroit? A little bit because, like I said, yeah, Breakfast Club is 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 a hot show based in New York, but it's like it took away from our news, from you know, from the city, from people that we love to listen to. Yeah, but the other part is people will tell you that they fight for you mm. till they have to fight for you. Yeah. So we'll say, oh man, that's messed up. Uh, what they did to y'all? Because I want to hear y'all on the air, and and it, I'm I'm sure there were people that called and said stuff, but mm. you know. This is this is what we doing. Mm -hmm. This is a consensus consensus. This is a corporate decision, and this is what we gonna do. This is the direction that we was gonna go in or whatever. So, I sat down from January to June because you have they have a non compete clause for 180 days, mm -hmm. and I was good. I had a great severance package and all that stuff like that, mm -hmm. and I did that, um, and then I went to work for Radio One. Mm -hmm. And that's when you was with Mason? I was with Mason. So yeah. I started at JLB with Mason, mm -hmm. and then Mason left, and then I was with, um, it was myself, because we had we had uh, MC Search, we had Tigger, we had mm -hmm. different trans, different groups. Uh, my last group was me, Fulis, and Mr. Chase. Mm -hmm. So then when I went back into radio, it was myself, Mason, and... Angie Starr and Tune Up. Mm -hmm. So I did that from 14 to 18, and they let me go. Mm -hmm. And then I kind of went over and did talk radio for a minute until the pandemic. Hit. That, that was uh, on 19, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, what was the difference with those with those stops? Like, you said you with JLB with everybody know y'all, you miss Chase Foolish, and then you go with Mason, and yeah. you go to 19. Like, what was the differences? And like, was it, did you see difference or like, did you feel different from I being did. with that first team? I did. Yeah. With, with, when it was me and Foolish, it was hip hop. Yeah. So it was, it was, it was T.I. It was, it was hip hop and R&B, but it was very hip hop driven. So mm. it was T.I. and Lil Wayne and Puff Daddy and LL Cool J. It was, it was hip hop 
mm. driven. Mm. Um, when I went to Mason, it was R and B. Mm. So it was Pat LaBelle and it was the OJs and it was Alicia Keys mm. and it was it was that factor. Okay. And then when I went to nine ten, it was talk radio. Talk, yeah, y'all just strictly got it. We, it was it was strictly talk. Um, we did, you know, we talked about the stuff that was going on and we did the news and we did all this stuff like that, but it was strictly talk driven. Yeah, yeah. It was not, there was no music. It was not music driven. It was just talk driven. What's going on? What's doing? Mm -hmm. And all that stuff like that. Nope. So it's interesting. With those three, which one fit you more? Like, you know, you say you got <laughs> hip hop, you got, you know, talk, you got, you know what I'm saying? R&B, which one fits Coco? You know what I'm saying? Even though, you know, WJLB probably was the one that, like, got you the most love. It did. But it which did. one fit you the most out of those three? If, like, if I went back into radio on my terms today, mm -hmm. or if I formatted and put a show together, it would be talk and then R&B. Mm -hmm. But it would be that R&B that... Uh, I know your mama listened to this. <laughs> your mama played this song when your daddy had messed up in the street. <laughs> Y'all know the song. Yeah. The thrill is gone, baby. Yeah. Yeah, but... <laughs> if your mama played this song, she was cheating on your daddy. Yeah. If loving you is wrong. <laughs> I, so no. it'll be that kind of, it will be R&B R &B driven. Yeah. And then I would come up, you know, a little newer or whatever, mm. but it would be talk and then yeah. R&B driven with a lot of, um, Information, it would be light and all that stuff yeah. like that. So yeah, yeah, yeah. all of that, don't nut it around all that stuff. For sure, for sure. Now, uh, now well, you know, Mr. Chase, unfortunately, he had passed away and yes. stuff. Like, how did that affect you? Because you, like you said, y'all been around each other. Y'all know each other, families. Y'all know each other. How y'all act and stuff like that. Like y'all family. So, so I wasn't there. Mm -hmm. So I was, and I don't want to get the year wrong that he passed. So I was at Radio One when he passed. Mm -hmm. Um, it affected me because I'm like, wow. Mm. I th I think death affects everybody. It's a few ways, but I was like, wow. Mm. Okay. It it made me appreciate life a little bit more. Um, it made me understand that um, sometimes we put a comma where God has put a period. Mm -hmm. So we always think we're going to get another chance, yeah, another opportunity, exactly. another situation. And it's not that way. So it made me see things differently. It really, really affected me. And, um, I was like, okay. Mm -hmm. Cause I think he had moved back to Virginia. Okay. That's where he's from. Yeah. He from Virginia. Okay. So I think he had moved back to Virginia and, and I was like, wow. And mm -hmm. I felt for, um, his wife, mm -hmm. You know, because they didn't have, I don't, I don't think they, they didn't have any children, but I felt for his wife because they was, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but that dude, like, we, we talk about this a lot. I lost a lot of close family members, my mom, my dad, grandma. It's like, it's like, it, it, you, it's, it's messed up, but you become used to it almost. Yeah. But you do have to appreciate those relationships because, you, like you said, yeah. you never know when it's going to be over. So, you know, it's, it, a lot of people hold grudges. Yeah, a lot I, of people don't I don't like, have that kind of time. Yeah, a lot of people, you know, saying, "Oh, I, I see that person tomorrow," but you never know if that's going to be tomorrow. You don't. <laughs> it, it it may not be a tomorrow. Yeah, it yeah. may be twenty minutes from now. Yeah, or it it may be whatever. And and you have to live and breathe and appreciate the moments. And then when you hold on to grudges and negativity and all that stuff, like I said earlier, you can be using that space for something else. No, for sure. It's for like sure. keeping old clothes. We like. You, you know damn shit. well <laughs> you, ain't, can't, you can't even wear that no you more You ain't gonna wear that no more hey, but I'm gonna get in shape <laughs> It ain't gonna wear you no more You wear a size 12 Them shoes is a size 8 Unless you gonna get them to somebody yeah. Quit being selfish And go. And, and pur I'm purging right now I got so many clothes And I'm purging now So I'm saying that Cause I used to be a devout sneaker head And I didn't, I've given away a lot of sneakers yeah. um, I sold a lot of sneakers or whatever But I'm like yeah. For real, yeah, yeah. you got fifteen <laughs> pair of black pants. Yeah, five of them all made the same way. Exactly. I'm like, but these fit different. I could pull them up like yeah, this. yeah. I can pull it over the over the Jimmy. A lot of stuff <laughs> I've, I've I've gotten used to. I'm like, yeah. forget that. I, now, I don't uh, need it. Speak, speaking of that, I can't um you know go into something else without bringing up uh Kool Aid. You know, what I'm saying me and my uncle was talking about like a lot of you know a lot of comedies. You know, 
comments have like a little you know beef with each other because yeah. but it seemed like everybody kind of like had love for Kool Aid. Yeah, cool. You know what I'm saying? Kool Aid was hard to even when he would do some dumb shit. Yeah. Right. <laughs> he would be so hard to be mad at because he was like, you know how a little kid do something and then they keep coming around you <laughs> testing to see if you still mad. You still mad? Yeah, for sure. You still mad with me? Yeah. Get away from me, leave me alone. Yeah, and, then, hungry, yeah and, and, and and especially we was on the road, so I gotta work with him. I gotta be on the road with him. I'm like, Kool Aid, okay. Then he'll leave, or or I hear him out in the hall. I remember one time we was doing a um a homecoming at a black college, mm -hmm. and we was doing a black college weekend, and he had did some, and I'm like, just leave me alone, quit bothering me, and I could hear him out in the hallway talking, and then he would knock on my door and mm -hmm. run. You know, how little kids <laughs> knock on your door. Yeah. Man, listen, I said. I could start calling his room and then I just propped the door open and left the door open. He told me, you're just going to leave the door open like that. I'm saying, I'm tired of you playing on the door. Mm -hmm. It was very hard to be angry with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if people were angry with him, I would be like, there's something wrong with you. What? Why yeah, there's something wrong with you. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. his whole thing was, I, I want to do comedy. Um, I'm going to eat. I'm going to talk mess. And this is what I'm going to do. Um, I'm a flirt and and talk to the women and mm -hmm. all this stuff like that. He was like a he was a grown man, mm -hmm. but he was like a a big kid brother. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So it it wasn't, you know, yeah. he, he he that's who he was. Mm -hmm. And and I think about him I'm like, dang, I miss him. Yeah, and it seemed like like he he was almost ready for it. Like he was okay with it. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. But he had fought for a while mm. he he had fought for a while and, and sometimes you just make peace yeah yeah and i see it wasn't he had a lot of love for him a uh, little duval yeah he was posting a lot about him and stuff like that so yeah yeah, yeah. rest in peace i had to ask you because like yeah. i said it, with, with the comedy game you got you know people don't like people because uh you know listen people mad with people about jokes <laughs> yeah. it's, it's beef and comedy right now it's comedians that got ppos out on other comedians mm -hmm. basically <laughs> about <laughs> out, damn out, about you know what it's about food and a joke mm -hmm. um it, it's a comedian that called another comedian's probation officer to report him Damn. now and here's the thing if i'm beefing with somebody i'm not finna i don't want this to, yeah this is gonna sound just the way it is <laughs> me and you ain't finna beef over 150 dollars mm -hmm. me we we not and, and if i'm mad with you about that just keep that mm -hmm. But it's it's comedians right now mad with other comedians about uh money or a couple dollars or something you said and they they arguing going back and forth on social media and I'm mm. like if y'all y'all need to be working. Yeah. Y'all need to be getting on some shows. Y'all need to be perfecting y'all craft. Y'all while y'all spending this articulate ass time mm. uh trying to spell out these expensive words <laughs> yeah. on social media, y'all yeah. ninjas need to be figuring out a way to get on the show, get on the road, uh get y'all license paid so mm. y'all could go on the road and and drive and all that stuff like that. Mm. You arguing with somebody that Everywhere they go, they need a ride. Yeah, yeah. You arguing with somebody that got a bad reputation for stealing drinks at the club. Mm -hmm. You walking up to people and drinking they drink and putting a glass. Of, How can I argue with you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. What? I'm, you a kid. You yeah. a child. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, it's 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 crazy. Yeah, but. it is. It is. Now, uh, I don't want to keep you too long, but I want to ask you about, uh, of course, about comedy and, and comedy today in comparison to, you know, back in the day. How, like, nowadays you got to, like, watch you gotta watch what you say you, you may hurt this group that group this group back in the day it's like nothing was off limits you could talk about whatever and people understand because it was comedy that's how you know what I'm saying so is it tough telling jokes now because you gotta be so mindful of who you may hurt who you may offend in comparison to when you first started oh my gosh everybody everybody <laughs> like, feels hurt yeah no facts. E e listen everybody feelings get and they don't just get hurt they get butt hurt yeah no so no, you yeah. got to figure out like first of all a lot of jokes i did i started 31 years ago so a lot of jokes that i did i just don't do now because they was they was funny but they was kind of corny mm -hmm. and my style kind of changed i you know i'm more like a kind of finesser yeah. on stage yeah. and, and a wordsmith and <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm like that yeah, now right yeah, yeah. And, and when I first started, I was a wordsmith, but I was learning how to navigate and what mm -hmm. I want to talk about. So stuff that I said then, I wouldn't say now, mm -hmm. but I would still say it now 
this 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 gonna make sense <laughs> but i would make it you gotta make it real funny mm -hmm. Cause somebody gonna be offended. No, fair. like like when I said I was purging my clothes, I, I I I do a joke now when I say I'm purging, and I had a bunch of high heel shoes and different shoes, um that I gave that I had and I gave them away to my um drag queen friends and my mm -hmm. transgender friends and they was like thank you. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> So when I first did that joke, people was like, I like that joke. That joke is funny. I said, why are you whispering? Because it kind of throw people off because it take people like, okay, she did say she wear 12 and a 13 in the shoe. Yeah. And if it's a man that's doing drag or a, a, a man that is transitioning to becoming a woman, mm -hmm. um, they do wear a size 12 and 13 yeah. in the shoe. Yeah. And they do because they hormones haven't kicked in. They had that voice like, thank you. Yeah. So it's, it's funny. Yeah. And, and, Nobody has been offended by it yet, but mm. somebody come up and be like, I don't appreciate the way you said that. Yeah. I'm like, do you hear how deep my voice exactly. is? Do you really hear this uh, Nina Simone voice, yeah. please? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you really got to watch what you say for real. Cause they, they would, they, they go, but some people want to be, black people and white people are different. Mm. Black people come to a comedy show with, your ass better be funny. Yeah, no, fair. Yeah, you. They, yeah, you they better. come with they they come with an attitude. They come with their fist balled up. Yeah, and everything. Yeah, for sure. You they, better be. Yeah, you better be funny. For and sure. they be sitting back like, yeah, ready, yeah, yeah. yeah ready. <laughs> and, and they'll say this, uh, Coco. I bought a ticket to see you. You bought one ticket. Mm. It's five thousand seats at the Fox. Mm. Now, if you had said you bought a thousand, mm. it would be different. Mm. But. Are you coming with an attitude? You better be funny, or are you coming with I'm gonna sit back and have a good time and mm. enjoy myself? Because so, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's two different things. Mm. We come to comedy different. Like you have to make people sit up front. So if you go to a, a comedy club and it's kind of black, you know, people sit up front, but they looking like they got an attitude. Yeah. And I always say, what? Well, no matter where y'all sit, I can mm. see y'all. Mm. I watched y'all walk in. Y'all not invisible till y'all get to y'all seats. I, I see y'all. Yeah. I see that lace front. <laughs> I see it. Yeah. I see that fashion over outfit. I see that. Yeah. I, I I see them snuffle up against eyelashes. I see all yeah, of yeah, that. Yeah. So you, you're not hiding. Yeah. White people come to the comedy show, and sometimes they could be a little temperamental, but they different. Yeah. I was just in Minnesota this, uh, yeah, last weekend. Mm. And the club that I work is a really clean club. They don't serve no liquor, no alcohol. They just popcorn, pizza, mm. stuff like that. And mm. it's a church, faith-based, clean crowd. Mm. It was a little boy, 10 years old, sitting up in the front. Yeah. Him and his dad. Yeah. And he was getting the jokes. And I'm like, <laughs> so the host was like, well, how old are you, young man? And I didn't see the little boy till the host said something. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. And so when I went on stage, I was talking to him, and, and he was just looking. He was laughing so hard, his little cheeks was flushed. Yeah. And I did this joke about <laughs> the black auntie. Okay. And I said, listen, let me talk to you. I said, what's your name? He told me his name. I said, listen, let me tell you something. If you ever in trouble and you see a black woman that look like me and she's sitting like this, you can trust her. Yeah. And he started laughing. He kind of looked up in the air. I said, no, for real. I said, we are the universal auntie mm -hmm. in every neighborhood or whatever. Classy auntie. All you got to do is tell us what's going on. And I promise you, we will get to the bottom of it. Yeah. And I was like, we the universal auntie. And he thought about it and processed it and just busted out laughing. Yeah. But my mind went to when he goes back, and tell his mom or his friends, I went to the comedy show and it was this big black lady that was sitting like this mm -hmm. and she was saying, this is the universal auntie pose and if I ever get in trouble, just holler and they'll help me. Yeah. And it was information to take back to the crowd because it's the truth. Mm -hmm. Now all his family gonna be like, you know what, Brad? <laughs> That is true, because I worked with a lady named Mamie, and she was an auntie for yeah, everybody. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you got to have a Mamie. You got to yeah, be name it. Yeah. So it's it's like you, I love what I do. Mm -hmm. I'm at my greatest peace, other than when I'm worshiping or when I'm at church or whatever. I am at one of my greatest levels of peace mm -hmm. when I'm on stage. Mm -hmm. So, so what, would you, what would you be without comedy? If comedy was never in your life, where would you be? <sighs> I can't answer that. Yeah. Well, I would be in it. So let me say this. I know that I was destined to be an entertainer mm. and people are my gift. Mm. So, um, I got in comedy as a form of therapy 
um, to deal with my sister's death. Mm. So if I wasn't a comedian, I know I would be an entertainer. Mm. I would be doing motivational speaking. I do do that. Mm. Um, or singing. I, I dabble with that. But I know whatever it was, it would definitely involve uh, interpersonal relationships with people. Was there a time that you wanted to just give up on comedy? Like, Man, Oh, I didn't this. quit comedy. Uh, <laughs> uh, I used to quit every six months. Yeah. <laughs> I ain't going to do this no more. Yeah. Uh, I hate comedy. Uh, I ain't going to do comedy for a whole year. Yeah. And then you find a bunch of comedians, woe is me, be like, oh, they were like, we going to quit too. We going to quit together. <laughs> and they be like, hey, y'all, uh, so and so and so and got a comedy club. Yeah. We need to rent a car and drive up there and do a guest spot. Yeah. Because we used to do that. Mm. So we be unemployed comedy wise for about mm. 90 days and be like, I'm going to do a show. Mm. I'm going to hang <laughs> out. We, you, so you quit. You yeah. get, you get defa deflated. You get defeated. You have a terrible show. Mm. Oh, yeah. It's been times when I just want to walk off the stage <laughs> and get in my car and go home. Yeah. I bombed that bad. Oh, shit. Oh, man. I'm talking about. <laughs> Don't even get your money. Just yeah. walk out the club yeah. and go yeah. get in the car. Keep that. It's only Be like, listen, hours. if you don't keep that seventeen dollars and eighty two cent. <laughs> now, I, I, you you spoke on like comedy beef and stuff like that. Have you ever been a jealousy within another comedy that you looked at? Like, damn, I should be where that person is. Because, like I said, we we don't want to admit to it, but it's a lot of times as podcasters, as basketball players, as rappers, you look at people like I'm doing just as much as them, if not better. But why? I can't be in that position. It ain't your time. Mm. I, I think um, it. I've had opportunities. Mm. Like when a bunch of comics moved out to L.A., I had the financial opportunity to move to L.A., but my mother was dealing with some health issues. Mm. And um, my grandson had just been born. Mm. And I knew in terms of everything that was going on, there were people that were in place that could have helped me and, and helped me with my mother and helped me, you know, with my grandson and all that. And I, and I knew that, mm. but I felt like in that moment, I needed to be present in that moment. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So I, I stayed and I don't say, Oh, I stayed. I missed my opportunity because mm. LA is still there. Mm -hmm. And now you got Atlanta. Mm -hmm. yeah, Atlanta. Sure. Yeah, that's, black, Atlanta. That's, that's black LA. Right that's there. black Atlanta. <laughs> then you got Houston. Mm -hmm. Well, you got Texas, different parts of Texas. Then you got, and people don't even understand, like Vancouver, British Columbia, and Toronto, and that whole entertainment thing. And then you got New York. You mm -hmm. got you got Florida. Mm -hmm. So you got more opportunities now. Mm -hmm. Um California is California, but you got so many other places to yeah, go yeah, so many avenues, and so, yeah. so much other stuff to do. So I'm still doing, I'm still yeah. moving. I'm still going. My thing is the level of disrespect mm. that people have because you are accessible to mm. them. So, you know, people, um, I got a text message. Hey, uh, listen, we doing a so-and-so. We doing a birthday party for my mother. My mother turning, I think their mother was turning 70. Um, we need to get a price on how much you are charged uh, to come and tell a few jokes. <laughs> yeah. And I paused for a long time because sometimes if you text in that place, you're going to say something fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's going to come out real fucked up. And, oh, this is my auntie voice. Uh, it's going to be real fucked up. Yeah. And I was like, wait a minute. Okay, take your time. And, and uh text is right go get you a cup of coffee yeah. i drove all the way to starbucks and got some coffee and sat in the parking lot i said uh dig this here that's how i started to text i said um first of all mm -hmm. i'm not available on that day mm -hmm. and i sent that message sip some more coffee <laughs> get yourself together yep and then she sent back well if you were available mm -hmm. how much would you cost mm -hmm. So I waited. <laughs> I did because I didn't want to cuss um, in the text because it was going to be fucked up. Yeah. And uh, I waited. And then she sent back, well, we got $250. <laughs> I said, baby. <laughs> baby with a whole bunch of A's. Baby. Yeah, baby. Yeah, said, <laughs> B -Y, baby. I said, listen, no disrespect, but no. Um, maybe you want to. I don't know mm. the sword swallower. Somebody walk on broken glass. <laughs> I can't. I can't do that for that. Yeah, no. I would rather come for free. Yeah. Then. Yeah. Then because people don't respect your craft, mm -hmm. and they'll tell you, um, 
Yeah, I spent forty thousand dollars on my wedding, mm -hmm. and I did this. But we need somebody to come and tell some jokes. Yeah, got hundred dollars. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I can't help you. Yeah. I mean, we want to do something different. And, and people act like comedians. You could just throw them in anywhere, like the potato salad. <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> they do. They choose like potato salad. Oh, yeah, we just want you to come and tell a few jokes. No, yeah. I can't do that. And I'm like, where would I tell the jokes? Well, when people, and this way they won't put you fucked up. They you fucked up. <laughs> well, as people leaving the wedding and then going into the other room to be seated, for the reception, you could be on the mic telling jokes. Mm. <laughs> so while people moving around trying to get a drink yeah. at an open bar, I would be on the microphone telling jokes. Yeah, hey, um, y'all here for uh <laughs> Tanisha and Raymond Wins? Hey, y'all, what's up? How y'all? No, yeah. no, ma'am, no, sir. I'm yeah. not doing that. Yeah. But they want to put you anywhere. Mm -hmm. So you have to. You can't demand respect. You have to command respect. Mm -hmm. You have to live your life accordingly and carry yourself accordingly that people say, oh, okay. Or it's the, well, um, nonprofit organizations. I love y'all, but y'all got to stop. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> it could be a, a on the books, it's a nonprofit organization that's worth $40 million on mm -hmm. the books. But they, well, we having a... Um, we doing an Easter egg drop and we doing this and we going to have um, so-and-so and so-and-so come out and perform. Well, I know what so-and-so and so-and-so charging you yeah. to come out and perform. And um, we was wondering if you could um, come and MC. Don't charge us that much because you know we're non-profit. <laughs> yeah. sure you you just there. said you got this person that's coming out to sing to yeah. a track date, not even a band. They're going to sing two songs. You flying them out, two first-class tickets. you putting them up in a five-star hotel. You're going to have a driver assigned to them. And I know you giving them 25 bands. Mm -hmm. I know this. Yeah. And then you gonna tell me, don't charge y'all y'all a non profit. Yeah. How about hell no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> How about y'all and, and then they'll get somebody else and then I'll see one of the members later on. You know what, we should have just went ahead and gave you that money because that person we hired, they was cussing and, and everything and they was late and they got there and they smelled yeah. like weed. Well, you know what? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, for sure. For you, sure. People really don't respect you. No. Nah. And by me living in the city and you gonna run into me at Sam's Club. I'm mm. a, I was at Sam's Club a couple of weeks ago and my brother, I'm gonna be at Sam's Club. I'm gonna be at the grocery store. I'm gonna be at the nail salon. I'm I'm in public. Mm. So sometimes familiarity breeds contempt. If I could touch you and see you, mm. I don't respect you. Yeah. And then they always gonna tell you, yeah, Coco, see you nice when I approach you, cause when I met so and so, she was mean. I'm thinking she probably wanted to be bothered with your stank, stupid ass. That's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she didn't want to talk to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or you, you at a doctor's office? What you doing here? I'm getting ice cream, hole. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Was, or you at the dentist and you you walking out the dentist office with your mouth like this, looking like Popeye. Girl, what you doing at the dentist office? Do you see this bloody rag in my mouth? Huh? <laughs> I know you ain't getting your teeth fixed. No, nah, I'm here to buy some rims. That's yeah, what I'm doing. Sure. Yeah, stupid ass question. But it, you just have to kind of roll with it and yeah. then, you know, not be seen for a while. Mm -hmm. And then there's people that want to use you as a, as a pawn to show okay. up. Oh, I got her. She could come over. I got an invitation the other day to a all alumni high school reunion. Mm -hmm. Not a the gentleman that invited me. I'm gonna say this, and then I'm gonna go on about my business. Yeah. I've had a wonderful time with y'all, <laughs> gentlemen. The gentleman that invited me, uh, we used to date about 20 years ago. Okay, 25 years ago, and he he found me on Facebook, and we talked for a minute. Hey, how you been? He said, You remember me? Yeah, I remember you. Blah blah blah. And he's grown up, mm. but he has not necessarily matured. Okay. Okay. So uh, we met up at the Fountain Bell Isle because that's that's my spot. Okay. Me met at the Fountain Bell Isle because yeah. I'm not coming to your house. You're yeah. not coming to mine. Mm. Pull up. Hey, what up? Oh, all right, you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you got a lot of cologne on. Yeah. Uh, I smell you through this little crack in the window. Why you got so much damn cologne on? Yeah. He told me, yeah, this so and so cologne. I know, but you got a lot yeah. of it on. It's in my throat. Yeah, I can taste sure. it in my throat. It's so anyway, it. he said, y'all laughing at me. He sends me a message in my message on Facebook. Hey, I need you to escort me. Dig the language. <laughs> I need you to escort me to my high school all-class 
reunion. Mm. And I I paused. <laughs> I watched Joyce Myers. I think I <laughs> watched Family Feud. You drunk a little coffee. Had some coffee. <laughs> About 20 grapes. I had some grapes. <laughs> and then I sent him a message back like, huh? Yeah, my reunion is. Um, so I said, what, what school? And he said, what school? Mm. Then he told me where it was going to be. Mm. Excuse me. I said, he said, and then he said back, I guess that means no. I said, listen, <laughs> comma. <laughs> that comma means something. Listen, <laughs> comma. I so appreciate the invite, mm. but I have to humbly decline. Mm. Nice choice of words. And went, went on about <laughs> my business. Yeah. Um, sir, you not finna walk me around. First of all, <laughs> it's summertime. <laughs> And I like the sun and I respect it, but you're not finna walk me around a all class reunion yeah. from a very popular West Side Detroit High School mm -hmm. at a very popular West Side Detroit Park, yeah. Rouge Park. Okay. You're not finna <laughs> walk me around Rouge yeah. Park like a trick pony yeah, exactly and show right. me Look off. Who I got. <laughs> Y'all see who I'm with? Look at me. Ah! <laughs> silky, silky. <laughs> I'm not gonna do that. Yeah, for sure. And then I gotta sit there with people. How you know him? You, know, you used to date him. Yeah, yeah he like big girls. Y'all used to date. Then it's always the chick off to the side staring at me. Like I'm like, mm -hmm. he not my man. Yeah. And she always looking at me like, yeah, I used to date him in the eighth grade. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not for none of that. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm not. Mm. And then I'm like, he had a lot of balls. Yeah, no, for sure. For sure. You ain't no, you ain't asked me out to dinner. Yeah. You ain't said, can I come cut your grass, shovel your snow? Yeah. Are you okay? Let me cash up you $17. Yeah, you have done nothing to, let's get back to this, protect or provide. Yeah, for, for you. Now you want to take me to an all-class reunion with about a thousand people. Yeah. And I'm supposed to feel safe with you. Hell no. Yeah. <laughs> now, I, I guess we. I want to end it off on this. Yes, what, sir. What's Coco's greatest accomplishment so far? You've been doing <clears> comedy, <throat> you say, 31 years, radio. What's, what's your, what, what would be your greatest ac accomplishment to date? It hasn't happened yet. Mm. It, ha it, it hasn't. I mean, all my moments have been great moments mm. for me. Mm. Um, great personal moments like... And, and this is going to sound corny, but I don't care. Like, to be able to get up and be in a sound mind and get dressed and, you know, be able to function and articulate and come do this with you. Mm -hmm. The fact that you invited me to come and be a part of this, mm -hmm. this podcast, this interview, and it's been wonderful, is a major accomplishment for me. Okay. So every all the accomplishments are major and they mean something to mm -hmm. me. To sell out a venue like Little Caesars Arena, mm -hmm. where they dare to see me mm. where I'm not part of uh necessarily a group but it's like Coco and friends and I'm speaking this into fruition so we speaking this into okay. Coco and friends at Little Caesars Arena mm. um Coco and friends at the Fox Coco and friends at Comerica Park Coco and friends at Fort Field and I've performed on all those stages with other people the Fox in Atlanta um, the the Shea Theater I performed all over the country, but where it's just me, this is my product. I've put it together. I've been instrumental in the production of it and everything. Mm. Yeah, that would be a major twenty city tour where I got a tour bus that say Coco and Friends yeah. on it, and I got my bus modified like I wanted. I'm traveling all over the country doing what I want to do. Yeah, that would be a major accomplishment where yeah, I'm able dope. to take that money mm. and do for other people. Yeah. So yeah, yeah that would be, be it. Yeah, well, I, with my husband, yeah. with my husband, yeah, for sure, my for husband. sure. <laughs> now, uh, you know, of course, where can people, uh, you know, follow you and, you know, what I'm saying what what shows you got coming up, oh, things of that man. nature. You you could catch me at the grocery store, <laughs> and, um, buy some chicken wings. You could catch me at Sam's Club too. I'd be riding around on the car. People be like, "What you doing on the car?" I'd be like, "I'm trying not to be seen, but you messed that up. I'm trying to get me some lamb chops and go home." Um, you can follow me on on Facebook. My name is Ginger Hudson. Please don't ask me why my name is Ginger Hudson. <laughs> it had to do with a crazy woman that was stalking somebody that I went to eat with, and, and, and just really? Ginger Hudson on Facebook. <laughs> 
That's a whole nother episode. Ginger Hudson on Facebook. On Instagram, it's Coco the Comic. On Twitter, it's Coco the Comic. On LinkedIn, it's Ingrid Walton. Mm-hmm. I know. They threw you, didn't they? Yeah, I was going to say a real name, too, but I didn't want to. <laughs> Don't nobody believe it. Yeah. You know, when people used to call my name, I'm, I was at a job interview or whatever. They said Ingrid Walton. I stand up. People looking like, you don't look like Ingrid. <laughs> well, I don't know. My <laughs> mama did that. Yeah. But, yeah, you LinkedIn. Coco the comic or whatever, and mm. if you're serious about booking me, yeah, not no two hundred dollars. No, yeah, don't don't play, <laughs> yeah. don't 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 insult yourself, and it'd be the ballers too. With mm. the, uh, we ain't gonna even get into that. That's yeah. another show when yeah. I come back. But it'd be the, the cats with the, the hundred thousand dollar rides yeah. and five hundred thousand dollars worth of jewelry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyway, so <laughs> digress. So y'all could y'all could check me out right there. Thank okay. you for I'm having pretty, me. And you want to leave anybody with some motivation words? You know what I'm saying? Uh, listen, Close it off. if you got an uncle. <laughs> <laughs> That's about 45 and um you know he want to go on a date and he know how to date and he got a command of the English language mm-hmm. and um you know he got <laughs> driver's license he oh, got a temporary tag on his car and sure all that is. stuff like that <laughs> yeah uh uh or, or if he you know he could be a formal felon a yeah. felon but he didn't got himself together For sure. have him holler at me he got to know how to walk in dress shoes and all that stuff like that <laughs> and, and have him holler at me we we'll go through the interview process don't hook me up with somebody that you wouldn't date yeah. and they resolve or have resolved most of their issues. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's it. Okay, like I said, uh, once again, <laughs> I appreciate you coming on the show. It was an honor to have a uh, you know legend to build somebody. I, 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 I can say right and in you school. Mean, tell the people that you didn't think I was gonna come. Oh, yeah, I didn't think she was coming, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I think she was gonna come to the show, but she came, and uh, yeah, she was on time, all that good stuff. So <laughs> that was dope. I, was, I appreciate. And I that. wasn't high. Yeah, he wasn't high. <laughs> and yeah, I bought gifts. Yeah, Brussels gifts. Yeah, so we all good to go. We good to go. <laughs> But uh, yeah, this shot versus everybody. Episode 127. We got the legend, Coco, in the building. Thank you. We got Q behind the boards. Podcast MVP, Voice of Detroit. Holla at y'all. Peace.